Hello, folks. Let's go, folks. We don't know. We still don't. This is, uh, we had to pre record this one, so we don't know. It could be over, it could not be over. Podcast could be done. <laughs> I mean, everybody's dead. All right. Uh, <laughs> I feel like even when this podcast ends, you'll still be pushing for it. Still up here, just alone. And one day when all of it goes away, I'm alone in a nursing home <laughs> going, let's go, folks. Hello, folks. Like saying it backwards. <laughs> just trying to get them to go. With Scribd, you get instant access to millions of ebooks, audiobooks, magazines, and more automatic suggestions and custom picks make choosing your next book easier than ever. And we have got a great deal for you guys. Go to try.scribd.com slash Nate for your 60-day free trial. This is for Scribd, and it is try.scribd.com slash Nate. Get 60 days of Scribd for free. Also, what do you want to eat tonight? Well, maybe you want a home-cooked favorite but don't feel like going to the store or you want something exciting and new, but it'd be great to stay in tonight. DoorDash connects you with everything you want, whenever and however you want it. For a limited time, you can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on your first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter code NATE. Also, shout out to our sponsor from the makers of Helix, the most comfortable mattress ever, comes all form. Easily customizable sofas, armchairs, love seats, and more. All form delivers directly to your home with fast, free shipping. You can assemble all the furniture yourself in minutes. No tools needed. We have one. Right now, All Form is offering 20% off all orders for our listeners at allform.com slash Nate. That's 20% off all orders at allform.com slash Nate. Welcome to Nate Land. Uh, I am Nate Bargatze, Aaron Weber, Brian Bates. Uh, we're here as always, uh, living it up, living the dream. Uh, we, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I was, we had to pre-record this one, so... I don't know what people do. People say that on other places. I don't know. Other podcasts, they say. I feel like I've heard people do that before. Yeah. Or they just act professional and just do it. I would kind of like not knowing. You would like No, no. I'm saying I, I would like knowing. I would feel weird yeah. if I, if they would just pretend that. You act, well, I've yeah. done that where I've done stuff. where, But you're like pre-tape something <clears throat> for, uh, you're like, we're going to air this. Like you can do an interview sometimes. And like when the specials come in and you're, and you'll be like, all right, I got to pre-tape all this. So we'll be like, all right, well, uh, you know, Saturday morning here, at, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm like, Hey, it's crazy Saturday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, we just did one, uh, with my, or they, <clears throat> it's funny. They overly try to make it be wow. <laughs> how's your morning going? Like, Man, it is, it is going just, you know, golly, the sun was out. <laughs> you know, it's just pouring Saturday cause you don't know. Oh, I got up early this morning, went fishing with uh, my uncle. I haven't seen him in 25 years. And uh, we decided to go fishing this morning and it's, just act like it's all. That's what you should do every, if you do any pre-record, it should just, as you start it going like, all right, what day is it? Just make sure they tell you. Uh-huh. This is going to come out on a Thursday, uh, <laughs> February 19th. Yeah. And you go, oh, great. And then you just start Happy Valentine's Day. Yeah, yeah, we still haven't celebrated yet. We usually do it on uh, February 21, so we're pretty excited. That's in a couple of days now. Uh, this being February 19th, five days after Valentine's Day. Just overly yeah. stick with it. Yeah, I like that. All right. Today's... Uh, y'all bailed on me quick. Uh, I was thinking about there was a... Old TV show. I can't remember the name of it. I think Corbin Bernson was on it where he was a sports anchor. And he had to go live from some guy's retirement party, some former athlete. But mm-hmm. he had uh, another conflict that he didn't want to miss. So he recorded himself ahead of time. And then they said, we can just put that over the backdrop of this retirement party so you can go to your event. So he does it. But the guy has a heart attack at the event. Yeah. <laughs> so the guy's just passed out with paramedics. And he's like, oh, we're here with... Yeah. Bob Smith, you know, what a great day for him, you That's know. That's funny. Yeah, it was very funny. What show was that? It was some short-lived show. Like, he, Corbin Bernson, I think, was the main guy. And yeah. He was a sports anchor. I don't think the show lasted very long, but I remember that scene. Yeah. 
Wow. It's going to happen yeah, one of these days with Brian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're here with Brian Breakfast Bates. Yeah. yeah. He's, I'm going to be he's on the floor. Not there. Yeah. He's, he died two weeks ago. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Hello, folks. <laughs> like, and then he's, and then everybody's like, is he alive? <laughs> yeah. And I don't mention, the one time I don't mention that it's pre recorded. <laughs> Brian goes down, and then <laughs> and no one thought to catch it. No one thought no. to catch it. What's up, everybody? Everybody's super healthy, uh, and we whatever he dies of, we really made fun of that day or something. Yeah. Like his, you know, he, uh, his hair loss. Yeah. Some reason it got your his hair. Out. Brian's got some new moles in this week. Yeah. Looking a little weird over oh, here. Mole alert! Beep, beep, beep. He zooms in and out, and then I mean, we're just it's sad. And people are just. That is, you know, <laughs> mole alert. Uh, we have a mole alert, but if I had a computer, that's I would yeah. hit mole like a alert. morning radio DJ. Yeah, like just really get into it. <laughs> There's nothing funnier than morning radio when they hit those sounds. Mm -hmm. That's very funny. <laughs> that's very, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just the timing of yeah. it. Mm -hmm. It's good, man. Mm -hmm. It's it, that's one of the jokes that's like a super old joke, but you're it never it still never fun. gets old. Still, still very funny. Yeah. Just when they do stuff like that. <laughs> uh, funny sounds. I wonder if you look up, if there's, just when we start these comments, you can look up and see if there's like a funny sound or be, like if ever been played inappropriately or like at the wrong time or, uh, <laughs> you know, maybe funniest radio sounds. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Something. To, to, to just hammer home. I feel like there's an example of how you said you'll say something ironically and then it becomes the norm. I almost feel like that's what those are. They're cheesy, but they're so fun now because yeah. they're dumb. We should get a soundboard. Oh, you can have one here. Right, we got our own little soundboard here. Oh, no. <laughs> this, this is the worst. It this is one of these websites that you just open up and you're like, this is attacking my computer. Yeah. It's so bad. Yeah, it's not, it was my computer. Uh, <laughs> so be careful. Keep going. Uh, have you guys ever tried to find the right book or audio book? Sometimes that can take as long as actually reading a book. You're scrolling around. You don't know what to do. With Scribd, you get instant access to millions of eBooks, audio books, magazines, and more. You also get editor's picks and smart recommendations based on what you have read, which makes choosing your next book that much easier. With Scribd, the world's most fascinating library is at your fingertips, all just for $9.99 a month. Get everything. I mean, millions of eBooks, audiobooks, magazines, and more. You enjoy instant access to Scribd's entire library for less than the cost of one single book. It couldn't be simpler. I need to go read more. I need to do some Scribd. No complicated credits or additional purposes. Easily switch between titles, genres, formats right from the app. I mean, I, the, the idea that they will just give you the recommendations, like you like this, maybe you check this. Especially me, I don't know all these books, so it would be nice to be like, hey, this is what you're in the mood for, so go do this. Yeah. So right now, Scribd is offering our listeners a free 60 day trial. So go to here's what it is try.scribd.com slash Nate for your free trials. You actually type all that in. That's try.scribd.com slash Nate to get 60 days of Scribd for free. You have back to back meetings, errands to run, and chores to take care of. What is the secret to clearing your to, to do list? A little help from DoorDash. You can get dinner, household essentials, and everything on your grocery list delivered. We use DoorDash all the time. I a lot of Sonic ordering. <laughs> I do a ton of Sonic ordering from on DoorDash. DoorDash. Yeah, it's wonderful. And then I'll be honest with you. And when they get you, I'll, I'll do a Sonic Blast. I order ice cream, Sonic Blast. And when it gets there, you know, I think it's like it's a it's a good perfect. Uh, yeah. You know, it's kind of just We've ready been to here go. We've done been, that. Oh, yeah. I've oh, ordered yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's the greatest. You can do it privately. And my wife doesn't know about it. I'm like, who's at the door? <laughs> and then I just get it. And I'll grab get it. it. They've been setting them on the door because of COVID. So they do right. the proper things. They could just do that. They don't even let you know that's happened. I sneak out there, get a little uh, sonic blast. No, no one's the wiser. <laughs> Along with the restaurants you love, you can now get groceries and other essential items delivered with DoorDash. So get it all, drinks, snacks, and other household items, 
in under an hour. With over 300,000 partners, you can support your neighborhood, go to or choose from your favorite national restaurants. Like I said, Sonic, Chipotle, Cheesecake Factory. And I don't have to tell you, uh, you know, we have ordered actually all, I've actually ordered all of those things from DoorDash. <laughs> Ordering is easy, and they even leave your orders outside your door. Like I said, for contactless delivery. For a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter code NATE. That's 25% off, up to $10 value, and zero delivery fees on your first first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code NATE. So don't forget, that's code NATE for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Uh, subject to chain terms apply. But we use it all the time, and you'll love it. If you've been listening to the show for a while, you've probably heard me talk about our Helix mattress that every comic has slept on. Well, those comics have also slept on a different chair, too, when they have to go to Laura's office, and we have to yell at them for all the wrong stuff that they do. <laughs> uh, and let them know they're messing everything up. They sit in a wonderful chair from all four, and they, uh, they're making the best sofas we've had. All form is the easiest way you can customize a sofa using premium materials and at a fraction of the cost of traditional stores. You can pick a fabric which is spill, stain, and scratch resistant. The color, the color of the legs, the sofa size, and shape to make sure it's perfect for you in your home. It can stand out, which is cool. The color of the legs is pretty crazy. I don't feel like people do that. And that's <laughs> such a good idea. Yeah. All form sofas are also delivered directly to your home with fast free shipping. Sofas can take, I mean, weeks or months to arrive, especially now. So, and you need someone to put it together. All form takes just three to seven days to arrive and you can assemble it yourself. No tools are needed. Laura put ours together very easily. It's the, uh, like we said, for us, the office, we choose the, we chose the armchair with the sand fabric with a natural wood legs. And it's, uh, I sit in it really comfortable and roomy uh if getting a sofa without trying it in in a store sounds a little risky don't worry you get 100 days to decide if you want to keep it that's plenty of days and you will know if you want it or not and i you you are going to want it it's i mean it's awesome the chair is awesome that's more than three months if you don't love it they will pick it up for free and give you a full refund they even offer a forever warranty literally forever that's impressive. To find your perfect sofa or chair, check out allform.com slash Nate. And Allform is offering 20% off all orders for our listeners at allform.com slash Nate. A-L-L-F-O-R-M dot com slash Nate for your new favorite sofa. That is 20% off all orders at allform.com slash Nate. Chase Miska. I think we can all agree, no matter what you choose to go with, whether it be hello, folks, or let's go, folks, Nate is still going to open up. Uh, Nate is still going to open up most of the episodes with what's up, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. Uh, that like should that. be. The About 50% of the time. What's, what's up? up, everybody? It, it flows up? a lot better. What's up, everybody? Uh, hello, folks. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's very funny. <laughs> Corin McKenzie. I love that Nate struggles a bit with reading, remembering things, and math stuff, et cetera, is officially on his Wikipedia. Is it? <laughs> We've got your Wikipedia pulled up here. <laughs> right there at the bottom. At the bottom. His most recent stand special, The Greatest Edge Ranking, was released on Netflix, and then it was filmed at <laughs> Universal Studio Hollywoods. Then also, Nate struggles a bit with reading, remembering <laughs> things, and math stuff, et cetera. <laughs> I took a towel. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's let's check the source on that. What's the source? What is the source? It is oh, link to the podcast. Link to the podcast. Uh, it's you saying I took a test for dyslexia, passed with flying colors. Yeah, uh, that's perfect. That's no, oh, that's great. That's funny. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, a little alarming. We can just have your Wikipedia page edited like this, but I'm all for it. Because I don't have one. Well, yeah. I, I mean, I think I just... <laughs> people are talking about some Wikipedia as being like... Uh, yeah, everybody says it's not the greatest source of news. What? But I mean, right now, it's killing it. It's named <laughs> it's all my stuff. Pretty accurate so far. For the Neighbor Getsy <laughs> news, it's uh, the most rely reliable yeah. source. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's funny. Daniel Rucker. I believe I know Daniel Rucker. I know I know him. Uh, Nate, in episode 52, about 20 minutes in, you're talking about nitty gritty. 
but you said knit and gritty. The definition of nitty is an infestation of knits. So you were fine with what you said. It makes sense. If you're looking at it, if you're looking at nitty, it's the small, tiny, little knits you're examining of an issue. If you're looking at the gritty, you're looking at this at, a, at all the small pieces of gravel and dirt in a problem. <laughs> so knit and gritty has the same ingredients as nitty gritty. Also, the writer who took issue with that phrase called it a cliche, but I think nitty gritty is actually an idiom. <laughs> idiom? <laughs> Why did you say it? <laughs> he also did a, a hand gesture. <laughs> an idiom. An idiom. <laughs> idiom. I was thinking idiot. <laughs> idiom. Maybe people should just laugh at the jokes. Yeah. Good point. That's man. what you were thinking when you said that, weren't you? What? The jokes? Yeah. N- knit and All, gr- knit and of gritty. Daniel Rucker's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, his, his defense of knit and gritty. Yes. Is what you I agree with it? Yes. You, it okay. is an idiot. Do you not agree with it? I had a little trouble following it, to be honest yeah. with you. Yeah. Because Daniel's smarter than you. <laughs> That's probably true. Ooh. Uh, no, I know he is. 100%. I've known <laughs> Daniel Rucker since seventh grade. Oh, really? Yeah. He moved his uh, his whole family. Uh, he's got a lot of brothers and sisters, and they uh, and they moved down the street from us, the Rutgers. When I felt in my special, I think I talked about falling down the cliff, mm-hmm. right? Uh, so when my buddies ran up to go get help, the first house they went to is Daniel's Rutgers house, oh. and they knocked on his door. But they were just moving into that house. I don't think they were there. They were there like the next day or something. So no one was home. And then they had to go to another part. So Daniel Rucker almost killed me, basically is what I'm getting at. <laughs> it's a great the Rucker start. family. Yeah. Uh, the Rucker yeah. family yeah. refused to help me survive. No. Uh, but we used to, I won, I did somewhat good in school till seventh grade. Uh, I won the science award in seventh grade. Whoa. Yeah, my name's, I would love, if someone's listening at DuPont Hadley in Old Hickory, uh, they put up our names on a plaque in there in the in the office. I don't believe this. They did. I don't know if they. It's still there. They 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 had it. Dupont Hadley Science Award. What was the award? Uh, my science. Project. I mean your project. Yeah. Uh, it was something with is with magnets because my dad had a bunch of magnets, and so we did magnets. And I remember, <laughs> I think we were supposed to go. It could be funny. I think we were. I was supposed to go compete in the because I won that in like the. The, city the regional one, the oh, regional yeah, one or something yeah, yeah. and uh we i remember we couldn't go so i don't think my family <laughs> believed in believe, they thought he's good enough for dupont hadley but he's not good enough for he's gonna get destroyed <laughs> and i i might have even sent my project just on its own and maybe it got beat or something i don't know but i was like i crushed it as being smart and then daniel rucker came to school and won every and single award bigger magnets I mean, yeah, Daniel won. It was there. It was very funny. The year before, I like won that science award. I, mm-hmm. I always had perfect attendance, and then the next year, I just got perfect attendance award. <laughs> and then Dan, I mean, the whole, you know, because they're giving these awards out. The whole, uh, the whole time, they were just like Daniel Rucker was like basically just like, hey, just stay up here. And he's the smartest. He's the smartest person I've ever uh, known. What's he doing now? Uh. Oh, what is he doing now? I, I've, I've seen him, uh, maybe lawyer or something. I don't know. It's always something super smart. That Does he I live don't here? Know. Uh, no, they live in Michigan. I'm also, we're, I'll see him in when I come to Michigan. Do you know where he went uh, to college? Uh, no, I don't remember. I kind of Notre Dame. No, bro, he could have. He could have went anywhere. I think he got. I, I'm going to be making Daniel sing. I think he got almost a perfect score on the ACT. Mm. Wow. And the only reason he did it is because he ended up missing a line from what I remember. <laughs> he like, you know, like sometimes if you, you answer a question to 20, but you fill it in 19. So he accidentally does that on the last like 20 questions oh. and still almost got a perfect score. Mm. So probably would have got a perfect score if he didn't do that. So maybe that's qualified for Notre Dame. Maybe they, if you can't, if you, if you do stuff like that, they don't want you. <laughs> Right. If you mess up, if you mess the last up like 20 that, questions, <laughs> you get them correctly, but then you, you know, you're off of yeah. Uh-huh. Which for me, my ACT, they were, you know, I didn't, I didn't just fill most of it out. <laughs> the difference. So Daniel Rucker, the reason I can't read and stuff is because he, Daniel Rucker came in my life <laughs> and took all my glory. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's off living it up, smartest person ever. Mm, yeah. Yeah. All right, Daniel Rucker. Uh, so y'all, you should all, he's smarter than all y'all listening. 
I get real defensive of my <laughs> friends. Let me tell you, every one of y'all listening right now, Dan Rucker's smart. Every single one of you. He's the kind of guy that if you met now and he tried something like this, you'd be like, oh, that dude's the worst. <laughs> I'm not hanging out with guys like if, that. Yeah, if, uh, if, well, if someone, I don't know, if, if they're defending me, yeah, that's a I, good point. I'm on board with That's it. a good point. Yeah. Idioms and cliches. Daniel's just correct and smarter. No, I know he is. Yeah. I'm saying if Aaron threw out idioms and cliches, it wouldn't go over well. An idiom? But he... <laughs> a throw. Yeah, an idiom. <laughs> but You're an idiom. Yeah. That's a, don't be an idiom. <laughs> don't be an idiot. <laughs> David Theobald. So I'm at a family reunion talking to one of my wife's cousins. And I mentioned a podcast I listened to where a guy had squirrels attack his fuel lines on his car. <laughs> he immediately goes, oh, you listen to Nate Land? Thanks for being a great talking point to connect family members. Even though we live far apart, we're connected not just by being family, but also folks. Also, thanks for the laughs, break lines for inspiring <laughs> our family conversation on squirrels. That's, I almost like our podcast being described as that. I listened to a podcast where one of the guys had squirrels attack his fuel lines <laughs> on his car. That almost is like the perfect where you go, you know, you're, you're like, is it about cars? You're like, no. Oh, no. No. Is it about squirrels? Fuel mm -hmm. lines? It's not about it's not it's about none of that. That's just one of the things that happens. Uh we're out here bringing people together, man. Yeah, bringing yeah. people together. It's kind of beautiful. Family members. That's what we're about. Thomas Buchart. Burkhart. Sorry. Nate, I love the special. I've been a fan since yelled at by a clown. I am from Tennessee, but I've been stationed around the world for the last 17 years with the Air Force, and your comedy makes me feel like I'm back home. I am not a sneakerhead, but I love a great-looking shoe, and my wife would say I buy too many. I have to know what pair of Nikes you had on in the special, and if your wife has a coupon, love the podcast. Give Aaron and Brisket my best. Uh, they're Air Max. Uh, I usually wear Air Maxes, uh, and uh, I don't know where we got them. So there's your answer. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife still has a coupon, though. Uh, I don't. You know what? I've I, I've thought about it. If I didn't think I'd get ridiculed, I would put what I wore on everything. Yeah. I get asked a lot, like about the shoes, uh -huh. about it could be shoes, watch, jacket, everything, and people. People, there's a guy asking me about my shoes that I wore in Tennessee Kid, and I keep telling him these are just the kind of Nike Air Maxes. That's all they are, and you could uh, you could design them exactly like that. They're not custom made Bargetti Sevens or anything. No, 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 no. They're just no. Off the uh, rack. I got some that I'm wearing on this tour that we designed, but anybody can design Air Maxes. It's not like I'm going to a guy. Okay. Uh, someone can uh, uh, design them. Uh, but I have, I've had a stylist, a stylist dresses me for that, Amber. She's, uh, she does a lot. She does Dan and Shay. She does Shay or a boy Shay, but she dresses, you know, like a crazy person, <laughs> but he's a rock star. Yeah. And that's what they, he's from Arkansas. So he's never seen nice clothes. <laughs> and so when he goes to a store, he's like, what is it? Su -su yeah. Su -su -su <laughs> Su -su that's how his dad would call him <laughs> in the store to let him know. Did we talk about? Did we make fun of that? Uh, yeah, he did. With my buddy uh, Ryan Malone, my uh, he, his dad would when we'd be at Walmart when yeah. it's time to leave, he would just whistle uh -huh. real loud. That's how we would know it's time to go. <laughs> really? Like we're talking about whistling, like he whistle like just, stop. Yeah. Like the whistle, he'd be like, did we we'd go into Walmart and he had to go get stuff, so we were allowed to go run and. Uh, go look at toys or whatever. Mm -hmm. And when we heard a whistle throughout that's the whole so store, funny. we knew it was time to go. Wow. And that's how we would run. That's a front. loud whistle for that's a whole whistle. Walmart to yeah. hear it. Yeah. yeah. Man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look at Shay. Yeah. Would you wear that bomber jacket? Uh, Probably that's not. That's not far off. It's not far. I could, that's not too bad. Uh. It's a little flashy, I think, for what I do for stand up. Uh, you know, that's that that's the only issue. You know, picking what you wear for stand up, it's kind of a it's a because you got you want to look good, but you don't want to be. It doesn't need to be too much. Mm -hmm. I mean, it depends on your act. Uh, yeah. What your act is, if your act fits, 
it, it could fit something. I've got like what I'm wearing on this tour, like uh, what I'm going to wear on this tour. This was the first kind of tour I'm doing where I've like actually got a few different outfits. Uh, and it's, you know, I don't know. It's kind of fun. It's fun to do. And uh, I don't know. You can mix it up. I mean, I, before this, I mean, you're trying to, I'm trying not to just, I'm like, what's the least? I like zipped up jackets sometimes. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, uh, so I'm just, sometimes you're trying to find the least amount of stuff I got to bring. But it's like you just wear your show stuff so you look nice on stage and, you know. Yeah. And I do get that. And people ask, so it's working. You know, mm -hmm. that's what they ask about the your beard, your haircut. You got your beard at, cut. Yeah. At, you know. Yeah. You let it go. You let it go? Do you still go back to them? I've been back a few times. Oh, yeah. so. Yeah. Oh, so I haven't been. Reoccurring. I had to get a haircut in Albany this weekend. Oh. So. I broke broke the streak there. You traveled to a different town. Yeah. Why'd you do that? I, I didn't travel there for the haircut, <laughs> but I was there. Yeah. And you felt like you desperately needed it? Well, I wasn't going to have a chance between now and uh, uh, when you go when I'm in LA this week. I see. Oh, yeah. So I just. So you took your chances. I took your my chances. Big day, yeah, your big debut of the, the Just for Laughs. Mm hmm. Uh, we gotta hope this air doesn't pre air before the announcement. Uh, <laughs> but in your big day, you're you get a supercuts haircut. <laughs> Does it look like supercuts? You have a hat on, so I don't know. Oh well, there's a reason I have a hat on. Yeah, yeah. No, so I can't remember the name of the place. I typed I just man I typed it men's haircut. Yeah. But will you yeah. wear a hat on stage? I don't know. Because you usually I do, don't, don't you? Yeah. But for like a big, I don't know. I'll figure it out. Yeah. Sometimes I think it gets uh, casts a little shadow in my eyes, dude. That's why I don't. Yeah. Someone said that once where I, uh, they, because they said, I thought you don't wear a hat on stage, but I could post the Instagram story, but I was doing sound check. I wear it on <laughs> sound check. <laughs> well, you'll wear it, so it pop it in at Zany's doing a spot sometimes. Maybe sometimes, but yeah. not, not, not a ton of times. Mm -hmm. I don't, I usually, I, uh, I try not to just because it does that. It, it hides your eyes. Mm hmm. Uh, I tell a lot of jokes with my eyes, but I think you're more of a physical guy. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> that is the most hats ever pictures of a hat. <laughs> I wear hats a lot. I don't wear them on, you can't find one where I'm on stage. There it is. <laughs> that's not on stage. That's doing an interview. Oh, well, that's, that's a like podcast. a panel? It's a live podcast or something. Okay. You can't find one on stage. <laughs> My beard was big there. All right, besides that one, right <laughs> there. That was outside. That was outside. Outside doesn't count. At, outside at, uh, uh, in uh, Austin. In Austin. Doesn't count. Mm -hmm. Doesn't count. Yeah. That's the same, same show. Same picture outside. That's a panel. Uh, All right. Hey, fair enough, dude. Super consistent. I wear it outside <laughs> and in interviews. Yeah, uh, can't find one. Can't find one. Yeah, it's an it, hats an interview thing for you. I guess. Hats an interview thing or an it, outside there's 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 an excuse. Right. If there's a practical reason for it, I can think of one picture where I have a hat on stage, and there's an actual reason for that. Where on the back of my album, I'm on stage indoors with a hat on, it'd be yelled by a clown. Yeah. But it's because I had LASIK, which I talked about in a, a, a special on the back of this album. I'm wearing a hat. And I oh well, go down yeah. it was right there, right there. So that's on the back of the album. I think that Third, picture with the hat one, on. Yeah. yeah, and I'm almost positive. Uh, is it that one? Maybe there's a multiple. Maybe I. You know what? I'll be honest with you. Maybe I do wear a hat on stage a lot. <laughs> uh, no, I, I don't remember. That's the picture on the back of the album. But the one I have on the back of the album, I have to. I was wearing a hat because I had LASIK and the the okay. lights were. I mean, I just had LASIK. And so the lights were killing I mean, my this eyes. one is like you're trying to get it in here. That looks, yeah, that was early. That was like, you mm -hmm. know, some early headshots. Uh, so long time ago. <laughs> That's you, the, you got one with the iron you're pressing on your shirt, Yeah, right? that was always a good one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was a good uh, Giannis, yeah. Giannis and Jesse would, uh, all right. So, uh Austin Fitzsimmons, I feel like you guys should start doing the Sonic commercials. Ooh. I'd love that. Oh, yeah. The ones that sit in the car. Right. Yeah. Where's you just, where are you at? Oh, in I'd the, love it too. I mean, those in two. The, in those... the back? You'd have to be in the back. Somewhere. Oh, you mean where I'm literally uh, at in the car? I think yeah. where, I'm, where I'm at on this. I'm like, I'm on board. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, Aaron gets to, gets to sit up front. 
and then what you, I what and I be you gotta, and you got to sit behind me, <laughs> Aaron. I mean, that's what I want to. You you got to see as far. The whole commercial is just you going. Just go back any farther. You just asking if this, you're trying to move the seat back farther, and you got to you lean it all the way back, and you order on your own window. You reach under the Sonic thing, and you and I just hear you order. And you're, you order a side meal that you don't let any of us know you're getting. You just quietly press the <laughs> button, and we just hear you, man. You know it'd go great right now. Like we think the microphone's off. Yeah. You know it'd be awesome right now. An extra cheeseburger, no, with tomatoes. And we're like, I guess, yeah, that'd be cool. And then she comes to the empty spot and tosses you, and you just boom. Didn't even know what happened. I love it. When you go through a drive-through, when you're driving a car and you go through the drive-through, do you order out of the back window? Never. No, oh. I mean when you're driving. When I'm driving, yeah. And you lean back far enough that you're in the back window, and you roll down the back window, <laughs> and you, and when they pull up, they're confused. <laughs> you're all the way back in the back, like Shaq, <laughs> just in the in the back. They expect the front to roll up, and then yeah. they just pull that back, and they're like, "We're get oh." Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Who's driving? I'm driving. <laughs> I think Shaq would have to do that. He has to do that. He'd almost have to, yeah. He has to sit, yeah. Yeah. Shane Etheridge. I'm wondering if there are any any jokes any of you guys have regretted doing after the fact because it doesn't fit who you are now. Uh, this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Real-time regret. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Live regret in the moment. I've had some stuff. I've had some jokes where I always like think like me. Uh, I have some. I think I've had some jokes, some dark jokes. Like uh, I forget one's on like Laugh Factory, and I regret doing it. I don't even want to say. Uh, I, mean, I someone think could I find know it. what you're yeah. talking about. It's a great joke. It's not a bad joke, <laughs> to be honest. But it's mean. And I actually had someone. Uh, they emailed me uh, a lady, uh, and uh, I was like, yeah, yeah, sorry. Like I, mm -hmm. I was like, I, I don't have control over that video. The video's up. And, uh, but I was like, but I don't do that joke, obviously. Like it was like, you know, yeah. just kind of very mean spirited joke. So I, I, I don't like that one, but just because it's, it's, you know, and then it was like personal. And I responded to her. She was very nice. Was it your wife? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> your wife emailed each other. Yeah. That's so funny to think about. It's just you in text. the same house. You text a lot sometimes. Do you do that? You text is fine. Yeah, but yeah. like to send a An email dear Nate. Dear Nate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is the stove on? <laughs> no subject. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Do you have any? I mean, I've always been clean, but I definitely, when I first started trying to get last, I would innuendo yeah. like stuff that just bad and yeah. I wouldn't do now. Yeah. I think just in, for me, it's like just the quality of the comedy. There's some just some, I had some terrible jokes yeah. not long ago. Still have some I'm trying to get yeah. rid of. Yeah. I think everybody knows which ones. <laughs> uh, I think everybody listened to the album. They can pick. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, there is definitely some, yeah, old, you have some old jokes here. Yeah, I mean, I, I used to do real dumb ones. Nate, I noticed uh, that you tend to start your sets with some variation of, all right, this is it. We're doing it. Is that kind of the like the comedy version of your pre-shot waggle in golf? Uh, kind of, yeah. It, it was it was kind of started with just letting an audience hear my voice. So if uh it was it was when I would go on stage and you know, you're in front of people that don't know you, uh, and I've got to get them into my rhythm. I found it being very the quickest way for me to do it without wasting a joke was to go, all right, this is it. All right, we're doing it. It's happening. And I still do it now. Mm -hmm. Uh some of it's just to get it started, mm -hmm. you know, and it's it just you can hear me, I talk, my rhythm, you hear it, just that little sentence, and then I can start my first joke and out and that first joke will work. Otherwise, sometimes your first joke doesn't really work because they're kind of like, what? People are kind of confused by something, your voice or something. Mm -hmm. Did you say his name? Matt Crone. Matt Crony. Or Crony. Depends if the E is silent or not. I bet it's Crone. Yeah. And I bet a lot of people go, Matt Crony. <laughs> and he goes, here. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Marks. I just want to say thank you for Nate. Thank you to Nate for his comments before the 1970s episode regarding drinking. The way... 
He put it as it was just wasting too much time. Really hit home with me. I am 32 year old, 32 years old with two young kids. I definitely don't have a drinking problem, but I really wanted to cut down. Hearing Nate and then reading Alan Carsey's way has changed things for me. I just completed my first week completely free of alcohol, and I absolutely love it. Waking up with energy is amazing. My life, my wife laughed at me yesterday and and said. All it took for you to stop drinking was this comedian who you think is God, apparently. <laughs> Love you guys and the podcast. I can't wait to see Nate in Saginaw in November. Hopefully, I'll be several months alcohol-free then. And then we can, you know what, Michael? Me and you maybe go booze it up right after that show. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Michael both get off the wagon right after we see each other in November <laughs> and just get, wow. That's great, buddy. Uh, it's a great thing. It's a great thing. I promise everybody. If you, uh, the older you get in 32, it all, that's a great time to, and if you're younger, look, if you don't have a problem, go have fun, man. But most time when people don't, it's like, you don't, you don't have a, not everybody's drinking problems are the same. They're not all hiding. I've seen people. I remember, I think I, did I talk about it at the time I worked at the water company. I don't think so. Uh, there's a, uh, when I first worked there a long time ago, this guy I knew was uh, an alcoholic. First time I really saw it up close. And he would drink during the day. He'd come to work drunk, uh, like I mean, six a.m. Yeah. So you're like, oh, he didn't sleep, and he's just been drinking. And he's there was times he'd show up there, and you're like, you shouldn't have drove, dude. Like mm-hmm. you should have called me. And like, I don't know how you came to work. Uh, we were in a trailer park once. I think I talked about Dusty because he was in trailer park reading water meters, and he was drunk, and he got real mad at me and threw a shoe at me in the trailer park. Like we just looked like we belonged there, <laughs> yeah. and we we're like reading the water meters. Uh, and I remember him and seeing that. And so there's that. And so people think I don't have a drinking problem. And so they, but that's what they think it is. They think drinking is just like this. Oh, you got to be, uh, I need to be drinking during the day and I need Mm -hmm. to be, you know, all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, but sometimes it's, uh, it's not that it's just like you're around alcohol too much and you're drinking just enough to waste a lot of time and waste that next day. Yeah. And so that's a great way. Michael, just stick with it. There'll be times you'll think, uh, you know, you're, you definitely miss it, but you only miss that first drink. That's the great soda, is what he told me. Soda, see his drink. You only want the first drink. You only want the drink when everybody goes, all right, cheers, everybody. That's the only one you want. That's interesting. Once you get past that, you don't want anything else. Yeah, but everything that, else is a nightmare. Yeah. Everything else after that gets a. But the one a drink does lead to the other. <clears throat> but the one drink leads to the others. Yeah. Yes. But there's nothing better than the first drink to go like, all right, everybody, get ready to get a drink. Hold up yeah. your drink. Everybody wants to. Here's to a great here's night. Here's to a great yeah. night. Like that's, that's all of the drinking builds up to that moment. Yeah. And then once it goes, it gets on past that, you're like, it, then, then you just misery. Are you a toast guy, Nate? Do you ever give toasts? No, I'm not a big fan of them. Uh, I've never liked them. Really? Yeah. You don't like the camaraderie of uh, I you know? Again, in the let's go way of things, it's gotten, <laughs> oh, you know, where are toast isn't let's <laughs> let. Yeah, it is. All right, everybody. Let's go. <laughs> I know, but it, it has feels like we're that. at Applebee's and it's, uh, all right, everybody, huh? <laughs> Guys, great podcast today. Like, it's you're going like, all right, dude, we're just eating. Let's just eat. Like, I mean, it's every single, you can't even sit down with everybody. You know, you're like, what's it been? Last Wednesday we got together? Let's, one more time. To, and you're like, oh. And you're, you're like, oh, I guess, okay, yeah. Glad we're together. And you got to take a drink. I got to hit the table and <laughs> yeah. do like I'm, a, like I'm an Irish uh, fiddler on the roof. Just <laughs> like, yeah, I think it's too much. <laughs> Too many toast. Too many toast. It got out of control. Uh-huh. Cheersing. Yeah. Got it got out of control. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. And you're like, look, I don't mind cheersing after something. There's there's the time for it. Yeah, it's gotta be. There's gotta, it's be, gotta, a gotta be there's gotta be a reason. You gotta mm-hmm. be doing something. It, it kind of slipped into, you know, mm-hmm. it's uh free wings at Fridays. <laughs> and they're like, huh? Every Friday we meet here. Tony Florio. A good friend of mine told me that he and his brother worked out a deal where they got to work out for free in exchange for cleaning the gym a couple times a week. Uh, when I asked how often they worked out, he said they never did once. This went on for at least six months. <laughs> I still laugh. I uh, still laugh when I think about these guys just showing up a couple times a week at this gym, cleaning it, and then leaving. That's very funny. <laughs> 
to be because it sounds like a great deal. Yeah. You're like, oh yeah, dude, we will work out. But then you would get to a point where you go, dude, I'm there already twice a week. I don't want to go to my place of work. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, but your work is what's is how you're getting there. <laughs> it's hilarious to think that even while they're there, they don't just work out. Like it seemed like while they were cleaning, they would either work out before or after yeah. or something. But even then, they're like, it's just get in and get out. And just to for six, I mean, just that's a, that guy who gave him that deal. That's so good. Six months, you got your gym <laughs> cleaned, and then you're like, do the guys work out? You're like, I don't think so. <laughs> I only see them when they come into work. That's very. Funny. How long does it take to clean a gym? I mean, yeah, we're sort of dependent on the. Well, think of the Planet pl- pl- Fitness that you quit. It's a pretty big. I know. Well, that's big. twice a week you go in there. That's not. It should be more. Yeah. Maybe this is a small gym. I'm sure it's a small gym. They worked out a deal. Like it's like a guy. Probably small, but smaller, but more expensive gym. Uh, it have to yeah. be for this yeah. to be a good deal. Yeah, I'm trying to think if Planet Fitness said you could come in <laughs> and clean this month. Planet Fitness <laughs> twice a month. Yeah, or twice a twice week. a week. Oh, twice a week. Man. Or ten dollars a month. Which or one do you want to do? Ten dollars a month. This, yeah. Uh, this feels like they were young. When they did it, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, uh-huh. uh, I would imagine if they're not, that's even better. Dude. Yeah. If they end up being like, no, they were in their 30s. <laughs> I would love that. But this feels like they're 16, 17. Yeah. And they, you know, then they go there and, you know, they probably don't really have a job. And so, like, <laughs> it's it was nice to go do something. Yeah. But it's funny that they that guy got free. <laughs> Nate, the worst word Chris, I butchered. Chris Radcliffe. Oh, Chris Radcliffe. Nate, the worst word I butchered while reading out loud was, Horse divorce. <laughs> hors d'oeuvres. Hors d'oeuvres. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He, I pronounce it as ours devours. <laughs> and probably, I don't know, probably got ridiculed by my friends. I'm curious how you are pronouncing it right now. I said horse divorce. So, a horse divorce. A horse divorce. <laughs> it's been happening a lot around here. Uh, horse divorces. <laughs> what if you get a lawyer? That looks like a business card should be that. What do you do? I do horse divorces. <laughs> and then he goes, oh. Specialize. You specialize in horse divorces? <laughs> do they get divorced a lot? More than you think. <laughs> Imagine what What do you think it is? And you go, I think it's zero. And he goes, it's every one of them. There's not one horse that I've met. That stays long yeah, with dude. his running mate. They're all so unhappy. <laughs> They're all so unhappy. And I deal with horse divorces. <laughs> I got more than I want. <laughs> and then someone comes over and gives him some caviar and he goes, oh, thank you. Because <laughs> that's what they'd be serving at a horse divorce <laughs> party. Upscale. Upscale. <laughs> Upscale hours devours. <laughs> 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 you know if you don't say what is it or uh or d'oeuvres or d'oeuvres why would how do they get to that <laughs> i don't know do you think anybody says that word correctly the first time they see it there's not a chance yeah and I mean, I, even if you know it you don't see that in your head when you say or d'oeuvres yeah you know nobody does horse You're about to say brian i was gonna say i can see how he would hours devours I could kind of see that leap. Horse, horse divorce is a little more of a leap, but horse divorce. <laughs> <laughs> do uh, I guess do phrase? <laughs> I could have said horse d do ouvre horse do phrase. <laughs> Excuse me, would you like any horse do phrase, please? <laughs> oh, I will. You know, I don't <laughs> mind if I do. <laughs> Picture you. As a waiter at like yeah. a fancy yeah. event, walking around, some pigs in a blanket. Yeah. Can I tempt you with some, some uh, horse divorces? Yeah, div- divorces? <laughs> What's that? Horse divorces. This is horse? No. This is horse. No, no, no. It's pigs in the blanket. What's the matter? You don't Come need on. any cutlery for this. What's the matter? You don't need any. Yeah. Cut Larry. Cut Larry. You don't need cut Larry for this. This is horse divorce. What do we got going here? You know? Where the, this is a civilization. <laughs> what is what the, yeah. Just add every. You can almost make that a whole sentence. Yeah. Horse divorce. <laughs> cut Larry. 
And validity? Val- what was it you said? Yeah. Validitimity. Validitimity, yeah. <laughs> es- Begali- what's that? What's the Mary Poppins song? Validitimity. Super Kevin Esme. I knew I was saying it wrong, but I thought I'd. That one I knew. I was like, for some reason, the right words weren't coming. And then I thought, well, let's just see what words. Let's get to Sometimes, the dosious part at the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The dosious. <laughs> yeah. Horse divorce. <laughs> just seeing a horse in court. He just sits there both. I don't even want to look at it. Every judge. Why well, is the long face? All right. He, get every, he goes, he loves it every time. Yeah. He goes, all right. All right. I always start like that. What's the problem? Uh, and she doesn't want to be near me anymore. <laughs> goes, oh. A lot of jokes like that. <laughs> That's what the law. The lawyers have a good time. <laughs> it's a good. It's a fun place to be. <laughs> At a horse divorce to go in there. Horse divorce court. <laughs> horse divorce court. And to go in there and they bring in the little <laughs> the ponies. The ponies. <laughs> and they're just sitting there. And they are, <laughs> and then they got a, and they're branding them. Get back! And you got golly, one shows up with a bunch of brands all over him, and you're like, oh boy, this yeah. one's trouble. <laughs> Look at all the brands he's got. He's got a bunch. He's got. He's all branded up. <laughs> Alan Meeks, Brian, thanks for keeping the dress code business casual. <laughs> Nate and Aaron look. As though they have games to coach after the show. Love the show and hilarious banter. Thank yeah. you, Alan. That sounds like a guy that would be on board with your dressing. <laughs> Meeks. Alan Meeks. Alan Meeks down here at the earth. That's what they say. Uh, yeah. We dress. I do dress. like I'm gonna, I dress I'm going to go play golf. You got a normal a t-shirt stuff on today you know, yeah i dress business casual business casual today's not the day to how you let alan meeks down yeah. i'll tell you that alan meeks finally gets his comment gets read he goes ah oh, and then look at and he looks uh, over breakfast across the breakfast table and sees this <laughs> what is this from why are we doing this yeah. why are you dressed like this this is to honor the 1990s today subject. All right. So I'm, I'm 90 years up. I got my Tennessee Oilers mug here. And which is from what year? 1997? 1997. That was the first year Tennessee had a football team. Yep. Mm-hmm. Played in Memphis. Graduating high school. I did. You so, graduated high school in 97? Yeah. We both graduated yeah. high school in the 90s. Yeah. Yeah. Both went to college in the 90s. Yeah. So I'm almost exactly 20 years older than you. Yeah. And I remember just a few things about the 70s. Mm-hmm. Do you remember anything specific about the 90s? Um, not about what was happening in the world. I remember stuff in my life from the 90s. You don't remember any events or anything? I was born in 91. <laughs> what? That's when you graduated high school? 90, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was in college in 91. Yeah. yeah. I remember the home run race of 98. I remember okay. watching yeah. that. Okay. That's good. Do you That's, remember Jordan playing for the Bulls? I remember watching Kobe play against Michael Jordan in the All-Star game when Kobe was a rookie. Yeah. And I remember yep. knowing who Michael Jordan was, but not not being old enough to be aware of the significance of all that. So does Michael Jordan, Kobe meant more to you than Michael Jordan? I like saw more. As, of, I saw his whole yeah, career. Yeah, and I, I caught the tail end of Michael Jordan. Yeah, and he's. Mo- I know him from Space Jam mostly, just yeah. in my childhood. Yeah, you know. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, I always say like I was never the big Kobe fan, and Jordan fan, but I felt like I always. If you were probably our age, like we just got done with Michael Jordan, and then Kobe was the same thing, mm. and you're like, well, I can't watch this guy. Yeah, but like, there's people that like. It's funny, like you, or like people that are younger than you, like mm-hmm. Kobe's everything. Yeah. And then there's people that are LeBron's everything. They don't even remember Kobe or Jordan. And so everybody has their thing. But I feel like you always miss. I kind of came back on LeBron uh, because I, just my age, like it was like I saw Jordan. Uh, and then when Kobe came, I was kind of like, all right, I'm kind of 
not paying attention to it like I was about Jordan. So I didn't really pay attention to Kobe too much. I mean, I remember Kobe and Shaq playing and all that. Uh, and then I kind of came back to LeBron. I was like ready for like that again, where I'm like, all right, I'm ready to devote my time to like a guy. Mm-hmm. It's like you just you, like you skip. Mm-hmm. I remember when Kobe and Kevin Garnett came in the league. I think they came in the same year, and they both 96. came straight from high school. Yeah, and nobody Moses least, Malone. Was yeah, the only one was last guy. That. that was before even my time. So I just like, there's no way these guys really. Yeah. I don't oh, even think it was allowed for a long That time. was just the norm as so many kids are coming oh, out of high no. school. It was a but big was, deal. Oh, okay. Was Kevin McGrenet first? I thought they came out the same year. Uh, Moses Malone was the first one, and then it didn't happen again. I mean, look up. like There might have been like some... Yeah, it might have been Kevin Garnett was the first... Uh, I don't think it was allowed for a long time. Yeah. I think there was a, either age or you had to go to college. But I just remember thinking, these guys are... Good. Kevin Garnett, 95. Yeah, the move was highly controversial. The conventional wisdom at the time was that high schoolers were neither emotionally nor physically mature enough for the rigors of the NBA game. But Garnett was selected with the number five pick in the first round round by the Timberwolves. So that's that's crazy because yeah. I I remember when they went back to you have to play one year in college. Uh, and Kobe was the next year. And Kobe was the next year. Kobe and Jermaine O'Neal. Yeah. And then uh, Joey knew had a good crew. Then after that, it just kind of started, and it was like Tracy McGrady. Yeah. Then Al Harrington, Richard Lewis. All those guys are big names. Darius Miles. I mean, I, I think they were all big names, but they all did kind of big stuff. Uh, like they, you know. And then it gets to where it started getting back to I think the bad way, where it was like guys were doing it. And you're like they're not even making it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then you're like they're throwing their whole careers away. Like yep. Uh, was it Kwame Brown that Michael Jordan drafted? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, I just uh, – who – oh, no, he went to Ohio State. The guy, Greg Oden. I saw him in Vegas. Oh, you did? Yeah. I've seen him twice. Like, uh, I forget somewhere else too. Like, out and about. Like uh, He looked – I he looked 48 when he was in college. Oh, yeah. He looked like a yeah. biblical character. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's uh, – I mean, just made a ton of money and just got hurt. It feel ter- you'd feel terrible, but I made a ton of money, dude. Like uh, – so he went one, right? And Durant went two? Yeah. Yeah. I just never. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just got played. Uh, and just, I mean, just, yeah. Just, you know, just a college kid. <laughs> just, yeah. Just a young man. <laughs> yeah, in college. I mean, he looks older in college than he does in the NBA. Yeah. He looks like that M. Night Shyamalan movie. A lot of, lot of athletes, sometimes you, uh, you see them and they uh, – uh, he played in the big three too, but a lot of athletes you see them and then they, like they you're like John Rahm is 26 years old uh, as a golfer, and I thought he doesn't look. You're like, oh, that's so young. Yeah, like uh, you know. Yeah. He just yeah he tested for, uh, positive for COVID again and out yeah. of the Olympics. Did yeah. he really? Yeah. I saw the Deshembo that happened to him. But. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. He missed – they pulled him from that one tournament. I saw that. He goes and wins the U.S. Open, then goes to the Olympics, test positive again. Yeah. And you're like, I don't even know at this point. You're <laughs> yeah. like, COVID might just be a John Rom problem. It's not <laughs> – it's a no one else problem. <laughs> and every – John Rom needs to wear a mask at all times. Oh, like, he, yeah. this dude just gets COVID <laughs> constantly. He just had – he's – give us a day he doesn't have it. Yeah. <laughs> So I got a Nashville Cats hat. Do you remember the Nashville Cats? Uh, yep. We went to uh, their didn't they have a, a championship game. Mm-hmm. I went to it. They lost. They uh, ran a football team. Oh, awesome. And this was our first, besides the Nashville Sounds, like our first professional. I mean, I think we'd had some minor league hockey, but mm-hmm. this was such a big deal for football. And I remember Corey Fleming played for them. Yeah. He was a local guy that played at Tennessee and went pro. Andy Kelly was the quarterback who was at quarterback at Tennessee. So it was a big deal. Yeah. And their games were so much fun. They played at Bridgestone Arena, what's mm-hmm. now Bridgestone Arena. And, you know, the scores. What was big, it then? Uh, I think it was just called the Arena. I don't think it yeah. had a, a name then. <laughs> I literally think it was just called the, the venue. Where are you guys That's going? Where... The place downtown? <laughs> the, the place, place to, to be. be. Yeah. The place to be. Yeah. Um, so, did you have an NFL team that you cared about here before the Oilers moved, or were you just big Cats fans? I was a uh, Washington football team fan. Really? Yeah. I never said the rest. Even of then, he, you called him that always. Knew. I called him that. I knew. I felt it. 
as I played with a <laughs> Donaldson Warrior on the side of my helmet <laughs> as a junior. I played for the Warriors, so yeah. we like I like the Redskins because they my helmet when I my year or two I played football was the we were we had Redskin colors and all that stuff. Okay. So like in our helmets were like warriors with and, the, with that logo, kind of that logo. Yeah. So it was like uh, uh, <laughs> someone's gonna find a photo of you and you get canceled. Oh yeah, uh. it's it, it was more cartoony looking. Yeah, you know, like, it makes it worse. Like, it's, uh, it was a little no uh, no. We were the Donaldson Warriors. I, uh, I might ha- uh, yeah. see if I have it. I probably have a I probably have a jacket. Uh, and they. Uh, uh, but like, but because of that, we watched. Uh, there's yours. Oh, I was the sem- we were the Seminole Midgets. Oh, good. No, I, <laughs> I mean, you cancel each other out with political correctness. I mean, mine's not that bad. I mean, it, you know, we were the Seminoles, but that was the name of our division. Would y'all come out with a gong, getting banged? I mean, good night. What's that? What are y'all? I don't know. Just anything that could be. Just remotely not appropriate. <laughs> Y'all just, you know, <laughs> the whole crowd just like doing that. Ah, uh, like, like oh, just tone it down a little. Bit. Everybody uh-huh. feels the heat. You wearing face paint? And y'all played the Bears. The, pr- that was the Prattville Bears, right there. Oh, you are about to put a move on that guy? I'm about to break over, that kid's ankle. Over pursuing dude. there. What did he do? Is this the last time you ran? <laughs> uh, that successfully, yes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Did you get by this guy? Oh, 100%. 100%. I ran for 3,000 yards this season. Do you remember <laughs> this at all? I, I vaguely remember yeah. playing on that team. I was seven in those pictures. So this is yeah, I was this was 99. So I was seven about to turn eight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Good times. Those are my yeah. 90s memories. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. So uh, 99? Yeah. Golly. I was... <laughs> I mean, close to starting. Co- I was well. I started in two thousand three. I moved to Chicago in too. So uh, it was well into my career in ninety nine. Yeah. How do you feel about the Guardians? By the way, you like uh, that name? No. You don't like it? No. They're. Uh, I watched uh, PTI and they talked to, like they had, they had the Spiders. Mm-hmm. They had another team called the Spiders. Yeah. It was like an old baseball team. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, why would you not just take that? And you're like, Spiders would actually be a pretty cool name. But I was thinking about it. I could see they could say the spiders, and we'd be like, "Well, that's stupid. You're probably going to get everything." But Guardians doesn't. uh, If you don't know, the Cleveland Indians changed their name officially to the Cleveland Guardians starting next season. Yeah, and their logo is like a baseball. This might be coming out. Might be in the middle of next season. Baseball. Yeah, you think it'll be on the shelf that long? We might hold it. By the Michael Marks is back to drinking. By the time this comes, Michael Marks. He, he needed that tried. comment yeah, for inspiration. He needed that comment for, to keep going. And <laughs> me and Michael both. We've already done the show. <laughs> I got Michael to start back. Uh, <laughs> I I think every new name seems weird. And you're like, that's so dumb. And then after a while, right. just get used to it. Guardians does feel. I don't think I like it because it's like, is is you're stopping the Indian thing because you're trying to. It's like, all right, you're being. There's, you're trying to be nice and polite. So then Guardians feels like you're trying to be like, so now we're the Guardians. Yeah, like it's nah, it's kind of, nah. you're like, all right, dude, just be the I, dinosaurs. Yeah, be an animal. Like no one cares. <laughs> just go be, you know, train the T-Rexes, <laughs> the Cleveland Caterpillars. Nobody. <laughs> that's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah. I love an yeah. alliteration. I'm a sucker. Cleveland Caterpillars. The Cleveland Caterpillars. Caterpillars. Well, the spiders, oh. like, that was a made sense if it's, like, connected to be the Cleveland Spiders. Do you know how the National Predators got their name? Uh, Sounds like a from your bad joke. story. From your Predators <laughs> joke? My dad's a Predator. My <laughs> mom's a Predator. My uncle's a big old Predator. <laughs> <laughs> I don't realize how southern I am until yeah. someone does my jokes. As you get, yeah. My dad's a predator. <laughs> my is his hands and bates his hands on the back of his <laughs> on the back of his like this. My dad's a predator. <laughs> my mom's a predator. <laughs> Hello, folks. Yeah. That's how we find and we don't fish. like mutants. <laughs> we don't like mutants, and that's all. Just his whole show is his hands resting on the back of his hips. Always what? a very uncomfortable what? position. Why? 
I don't know if you ever see people stand like that. That's what old people do. It's like Forrest Gump stood like this. Yeah, Yeah, he did. And then it's always, yeah, it's like, it's a very uncomfortable, you're like, does your wrist not hurt? Like, and people are just like, no, this is how I wait for the bus. And you're like, yeah, well, I don't know, maybe, is it? What is, what is Brian, does he have a headset mic or does he just have the mic in front of him in the stand? He leaves it out there and and he touches the top of it. He goes, hello, folks. And now we're here. Because he they can't move it down. <laughs> My dad's a predator. <laughs> oh, that's a good guess. Yeah. Uh, Where did it come from? They uh, found a saber tooth tiger underneath downtown Nashville when they were doing some construction work. Really? Part of just a, anywhere downtown Nashville. It was well, I got specifically here. Um, it was. During 1971, during construction of the first American National Building, now the UBS Tower, it's partial skeleton of a saber-toothed tiger. So they held a contest to see let people pick what it should be called. 75 names. They got it down to the final three: the Ice Tigers, the Fury, and the Attack. But then the owner of the Predators said, "It's my team, so I can choose." What we call it. So he said the Predators, and they became the Predators. I like this guy. He just totally ignored the polls and did what he wanted. Let's go, folks. I think this guy gets it. You know what? Turns out it's my podcast and my team, and I can do whatever I want. Uh, what were the what other names? The final three were the Attack. Let's see what I say. The Attack, the Fury, and the Ice Tigers. The Fury? Mm-hmm. F-U-R-Y. And the Ice Tigers? Ice Tigers is terrible. I was about to say I like that one. You like that one? Yeah, ice it's tigers. Different. It's the different. Natural ice tigers. It's different. I don't like that. I don't like the name being a concept, like yeah. heat or fury or wild sounds. Yeah. Give me. I need some sounds. Yeah, I don't like that either. You don't like the sounds. Give me something concrete. Oh, I like the sounds. And I'm I mean, I'm open to throw out the first pitch, September seventh, yeah. <laughs> Nashville Sounds. If you're yeah. listening. I still support them. I'm just saying. <laughs> the sounds are great. I love the sounds name. Sounds. I just feel like we lean into the music thing quite a bit. In this I, that scene. had to well, be weird, kind though. kind of our thing. Yeah. But what know. else do you want it to be? I you mean, know? The, the Predators. <laughs> the, uh, Let's the, call all that. The Ice Tigers. The, the <laughs> Meat and Threes. Is that what you want? Dude, that would be awesome. The, yeah. Nashville <laughs> meet and threes. The, imagine the concession stands. Man, oh. The Nashville meet and threes. Just some big. What? Uh, what's the construction look like? We're doing bigger seats <laughs> for sure. We know our audiences. <laughs> we can't be squeezing everybody in. Uh, it had the room to hold two thousand, but we did eight hundred comfortably. <laughs> 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 that. I imagine every seat is like those desks where the little yeah. thing fl- flips out right in front of yeah. you. And you yeah. just got you a full meet and greet. All ramps. Oh. No, uh, no steps. No steps. <laughs> they got just They're still out of breath. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 seventh inning stretch is like for it's just yeah, like you actually need ooh, to. Yeah, 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 it's like a real like people like get up and I vision a lot of rascals just running around the ballpark. It sounds awesome, you yeah. know. I'd go. I'll throw out the first pitch. That <laughs> yeah. Nashville meeting threes. Nashville meeting threes. <laughs> you just sitting down from a rascal scooter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they pull you up in the back of a truck. <laughs> they just backed it. Beep. Drive over the mound, and you don't even get out of your chair, and you just throw the first pitch, and then they just drive you off, and then you go, and then they unload you from like the truck. It'd be they should do a show. They should have a team that's for just the larger folk. Yeah, they're just big. Nobody's doing the wave at that one. No one's doing the Nashville Big Bones. Sit down. That's what that'd be a good name. The Big Bones. The Big Bones. Alabama Big Bones. Uh huh. The Huskies. That's what the Huskies is. Oh, know? yeah. Nebraska. No, corn. Washington. Uh, Washington. Uh, yeah. Washington Huskies. Corn Huskers. Corn Huskers. Yeah, yeah. Washington Huskies. <laughs> yeah. No, that's like the wolf, right? I know, but, but it's, it's like also Husky. Kind of big. They're big over there. <laughs> is what basically they... Yeah, Husky Pants. What if... They should let other states pick the team name. Mm-hmm. To you be think? like, what do you... Do they go, what do you think of, mm-hmm. you know... So what's Kentucky's? Let's say we get to name Kentucky's team. It'd be, yeah. We have caves. Cave. <laughs> Kentucky bat caves. caves. Kentucky bat caves. <laughs> bat caves. They have the Louisville bats already. Yeah. So it's not far off. 
So they kind of nailed it because they yeah. named themselves what other people would yeah. name them. Yeah. So, so we the sounds. So that works out. I get, yeah. Reds. I like Cincinnati Reds. Cincinnati Reds is nice. Cincinnati they were the red stockings, I think. Yep. Reds is good. But you don't think of red when you think of Cincinnati. That's true. Well, that, it was red. so long ago. So we got a Cincinnati Reds jersey right there. So yeah. Gray's autograph. I bet when the Nashville Sounds first, that's such a weird name. That was probably hard it probably to get sounded on board weird. With. Yeah. Yeah. Cats is good. Nashville Cats is good. With a K. Yeah. <laughs> the K is yeah. funny. Apparently that came from a song. There's a song called the Nashville Cats. Oh. I looked that up. Apparently. You when they you walk in somewhere, they look at you like a merch. Like you're just a <laughs> merch. I mean, you, you just you wherever you go, you Can just you buy see this? The... Planet Hollywood, Nashville. Yeah. Do you remember when the yeah. one down there? I went to the grand opening. <laughs> yeah. All the celebrities came into town and we were a media sponsor, so I got to be down there with yeah. them and Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Vanessa Williams. Their movie had just come out that weekend the eraser yeah and they were in town promoting it bruce willis sang on lower broadway yeah it was pretty awesome yeah yeah what what is planet hollywood you don't even know what it I is you know what it uh, is. is it like the wax museum no no it's just a theme a hollywood theme restaurant. restaurant oh it's like a hard rock like, cafe oh, okay <laughs> but like but instead of music it's just movies yeah and, and they never really took off and i uh they still have one in opry mills uh not in planet so. hollywood i don't think so but they, it was like a fun it was like hard rock heaven. And they kind of put on, they put them everywhere. They went after it, dude. I mean, they yep. went everywhere. And all these celebrities were part owners. Yeah. But then it just kind of, I think there might be some left. It closed, the one in Nashville closed in 2001. <laughs> so it was a pretty, pretty short ride, dude. It's opened in June 96. Yeah. Yeah. Had financial problems. Couldn't, couldn't hack it, it dude. It was, you know, it's tough to make it in this city. Yeah. The thing was, is like, uh, it was like it's fun. You're like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and then you go to it once, and then you're like, I don't need to ever go again. Yeah, I don't know how the Hard Rock Cafe still stays open in Nashville. Hey, that place has been there forever. Yeah, I, I feel like when in my whole on life, Broadway down yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, since yeah. the nineties. Yeah, but maybe because it were music, so yeah. it kind of works out that it's like, and it's. I mean, it is prime location. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It might be the best location of any place. Yeah. Right there on the corner, you see right the river. Yeah. I forget it's even there. It's just like you never hear about it. Well, kind of because there's a parking lot in front of it, which is crazy. Yeah. And there's usually not that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's crazy. All right. Huh. I don't know how local we need to get on this. <laughs> well, just my attire. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm done. Yeah. These yeah. socks came from. No. <laughs> uh, what do you think of when you think of the 90s? I mean, surely you remember. Saved by the Bell. Yeah. 90s. Uh, yeah, I remember that show it. or like that aesthetic. That show, okay. We used to watch the show. I don't, I think it was airing live then. Would it come out on Saturdays? Mm -hmm. Uh, so I remember Saved by the Bell, Dawson's Creek TV shows a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh, I remember the Titans coming here and going to a game and they played the Redskins at Vanderbilt. Um, uh, uh were you? I, I mean, high school. So you said you're a Redskins fan. When did you get on board? Did it take you a while to get on board with Nashville's team? No, I remember. So our my buddy Ryan Malone is Steelers fan still, and I remember he was like, it was like a, kind of a debate: do you trade your, do you go for your home team, or do you stick with your, yeah, your true fan? You know, like yeah. that you kind of grew up a fan, and. uh and I, but I, I was like, I was pretty like, I was like, you can't not cheer for him. Like, it's hard for your home. Uh, he's still a Steelers fan though, but he was a diehard Steelers fan. And then, uh, and he was a Steelers fan because of Andy, because their colors were similar as far as like black and yellow. And it's like, all right, I'll just be a Steelers fan. So he's a big Steelers <laughs> fan. Uh, you had to pick teams like. I know. It's so funny. That's, that's why you choose a team as a kid. And then it just lasts into adulthood, you know? Yeah. Because you like the colors when you were a kid, I totally get that. Oh, I mean, if so yeah. many people do that. I mean, the, the, you got so many cowboy fans, or you know, mm -hmm. it's all this random <clears throat> stuff. Some of the, uh -huh. some of these games people could see. Uh -huh. uh, so yeah, so I remember. But then I, I became a, a Titans fan, and now now we're all in. Yeah. Um, do you remember OJ and all that stuff? I so I remember. I do remember OJ. I don't remember it as much as everybody does. Yeah. Uh, 
I always like think about that because I wish I did. Like, you know, I, I remember it all happening. I remember it doing, but I just don't think I was, was it 95? Or, yeah, the crime happened in 94 and his trial was 95. Allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, the crime definitely happened. Yeah. yeah, we don't know when it happened for sure. But yeah, a right. crime happened. <laughs> yeah, okay. Allegedly, it Allegedly happened in 95. Crime yeah. happened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, uh, uh, I remember, like, but you know, I was like, so 94, 95, I had to be 15, 14, 15. You know, you're just not. Yeah. It's, you, you don't have the, uh, what is it, the wherewithal? Yeah, the bandwidth. Is that it? The bandwidth? I think wherewithal is wherewithal. Wherewithal works. I said wherewithal. Yeah, well, it depends on how you finish the sentence. I said wherewithal. <laughs> The wear a thaw. Wear I wasn't really wearing thaws back then, <laughs> yeah. so I couldn't. I didn't. I wear some thaws time to time. <laughs> where we? What is it? Wherewithal? 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 What does that even mean? I don't know. Yeah, but wherewithal like the mental fortitude. I think you're like using the, it correctly. Yeah. The capacity. Yeah. The. I don't think I had the wherewithal to think this is this. I remember it being on my parents watching it, but like you're yeah the you presence know, of mind. The presence of mind. You you gotta yeah. realize you have no. You're not on the internet. You're not on all this stuff. You're not checking blah blah, blah all this yeah. thing. So you're just kind of like you go outside. You're just like you live in just your town, mm. and you're and nothing's around, and you just are like I live. I'm playing my buddies. Well, also, did you care who O.J. Simpson was at that age? Probably not, no. right? I mean, because he was way before your time. Brian, you grew up watching. <laughs> yeah, I he remember him when he uh, a USC. picked USC. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the Hertz commercials where he ran through the airport. Yeah, yeah. O.J.'s sneaky, like played old, <laughs> like uh, like an old time player. Like you think O.J. because he's he's been so famous just with everything. Yeah. That you don't realize, like he played. Did he play in the sixties? Sixties in yeah. college. Yeah. In college, like that's crazy. Uh -huh. And you're like, oh, dude, that's old. He played with like the one bar on the helmet. Yeah, like it looks so old when you watch the clips. I remember him from the Naked Gun movies. I love those movies. Yeah, and he was in those. He was great at them. Naked. <laughs> we, I think, I think we all say naked. Yeah, that's very southern. Yeah, you say naked. Nec naked gun. Naked is how regular, you know, city. Folk. I probably say naked. You probably say naked. I'm probably, naked gun movies. I probably split you, the difference. Where are we going? Naked gun movies. <laughs> we're gonna go over to movie, movie theater and watch naked gun movies. <laughs> go, what's that? Yeah. What are you doing, boy? I was trying to say earlier Tennessee Oilers. Oilers. And Oilers. Laura couldn't figure out what I was trying. I have a hard time with that word. I say oil. Yeah. Uh, I, I I don't do it. I can't say oil is one of my words I can't say on stage. Cause uh and I had a joke about that. Uh, not that I changed it. Well, I forget what the word, but I couldn't say oil. I'd say motor oil. Just so if I go, I could go change the oil. People yeah. are like, they don't know. They don't. <laughs> they they go. What? You gotta say petroleum just to avoid. <laughs> yeah, say yeah, I would. Petroleum would be. I gotta go fuel. Fuel. Petrol. I remember I was still in college when the chase happened. OJ Chase happened. And yeah. That was just such a crazy story. Um, but to your point, if you don't have cnn or something you know you're not going to see it just around the clock you would see it like on the, on the news yeah like on the news or it's just on tv it's it's going on bigger than like the casey anthony trial was i think so yeah, yeah probably far to me. yeah because it was the only thing i'm trying to watched. think of another trial that kind of dominated the news headlines for a while i mean they call it the trial of the century well, they also call that Scopes Monkey Trial. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> yeah. you can't just keep throwing that around. But the trial went on forever. I mean, the, yeah. everyone who testified became a celebrity. Right. Yeah. Kato Kaling. Still, and the people still are, still, are. They're making TV shows about it still right now. Yeah. Greta Van Susteren, that's how she became first well known, I think. Yeah. It was from that. You know who that is? I know Greta Van Susteren from Fox News. Yeah. But Casey what, Anthony. What, is, what was she huge. doing during? I think she was giving legal analyst, analysis then. Oh. Yeah. Patricia Clark and. Uh, who can, compare it? Who would have to do that now for it to be as big of a story? Like, if you could give a retired. modern comparison, it'd be Peyton Manning to somebody <laughs> yeah. who's not only famous and successful and was good at what they did, but also beloved. I'm just in I'm the just way Peyton Manning. Pey Peyton Manning. You think is uh, yeah needs uh, career wise got to be done, got to be somewhat out of the limelight. OJ had been done longer. Yeah, but that's a that's a pretty good one. But Peyton's beloved by people, yeah. and it would definitely yeah. shock us if Peyton murdered <laughs> his wife. He, and yeah, well, well, yeah, was it, it Nicole his wife? 
Were they married? Yeah. They were still married. Oh, they're still married? Oh, maybe they were divorced. I don't know. Yeah. Estranged? Yeah. Allegedly. So maybe Peyton has done this, and we just don't (laughs) know yet. Be amazing if a story comes out by the time this airs, oh, and it's wow. all they're talking and about. And Brian's like, dead, and Brian's so dead. is so is so Peyton Manning's is, wife. And you're like, God, dude, these guys. We might go to the top, Aaron, of number one <laughs> podcast. I was trying to think of someone like Charles Barkley. Charles Sh- Barkley, yeah, Sh- but, Charles Barkley would almost yeah. be funny. <laughs> yeah, you but someone I, who's been out for a while, but still, we still well know. That's yeah, Shaq or somebody, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like Charles Barkley is so everything he does. I think he's so funny that it would have a totally different tone. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think it might change pretty quickly if he murdered two yeah. people. Yeah, well, OJ was in Naked Gun, and those were pretty funny. <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. He Brian. goes all the way down the stands, and his body flips off yeah. at the California Angels game. <laughs> yeah, that's the top good, of the world. Uh, you're yeah. making great points. I retract it. <laughs> But I bet your mom was all about the OJ trial. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, like, so big, yeah, the big trials now, I'm trying to think of the last big, was it Casey Anthony? Uh, Man, I guess so. I mean, Other than, like, the the way more, like, the, the George Derek, Zimmerman Derek, and that kind of Derek stuff. Chauvin. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> yeah. But it didn't, like, even those, it's, uh yeah. There's something different about like that's like some of those are like uh, the times we're in and blah blah, blah all that, yeah. that kind of stuff. I understand that. And there's a difference between like this kind of like mer- it's like uh, there's a soap opera you feel right. to this kind of. There were right. so many. Casey Anthony's not. I mean, it's brutal because right. it's a child, but it's like it kind of does have it where it's got. You know, there's all these. You just the news are just all over. It. Yeah, there were so many crazy stories, soap opera involving athletes, not even sports related. OJ. If you got that, Nancy Kerrigan and Tanya Harding, mm-hmm. that was just another, just that would dominate the news cycle for, well, that was right before the Olympics. Yeah. And uh, I remember that. When was that? 96? I think it was 94. Five, 94. I remember that. And those Olympic women's figure skate, which is always very well watched anyway, was just one of the most watched events ever, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they were, cause Nancy Kerrigan was, Huge. Did Tanya Harding end up competing that same year mm. in the Olympics? So she was everyone. She was being accused of this, and then ended up and went out there and competed. She did it, and then I think she stopped her. She had issues with her laces and started yeah. crying. Yeah. Um, oh. And Nancy Kerrigan did not. She was hurt, right? Completely out of the Olympics. <laughs> I don't even remember. I feel like she yeah. competed. Oh, I thought she had a rehab, and then she came back the next time and almost won. I think yeah. she can. I, I can't remember the time between the. It's so crazy. The dude. What are the, the, they did when it first happened? I think I do remember it being like Nancy. Like they the first they're like, "Who did this? We didn't know." And then it was just like, "Oh, it's the other skater." Mm-hmm. And that's like a. I mean, it's a. Yeah. They made a movie out of it. They did. I, I, I did. I talked about it in the special. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and she, uh, she really didn't know anything though, did she? Tanya Harding. Yeah, I thought her husband. I think she did it. Got Jeff Galuli to do it. On without her blessing, oh, I don't man. know. I don't know. I, don't I know. think you're being pr- you're being <laughs> yeah. pretty generous there with the I facts, Brian. Yeah, I'm a big Tony Harding fan. <laughs> yeah, just like what she represents. Mm-hmm. So there's that. There's uh, Mike Tyson biting Evander Holyfield's ear. Oh, that was yeah. Oh man, yeah. So I remember that. Nineties were great. Yeah, uh, they were. Uh, I remember. I remember when that happened. God, was I watching that? I was. Yeah, I think I remember. I don't know where. It I was, was a rematch, and Holyfield had beaten him. Yeah. the first time. He's on his way down. Tyson was. This was the end. Of it was just, getting near there. Yeah. yeah, he was so invincible. February nine. He start the decade. He loses the biggest upset in boxing history to Buster Douglas. Mm-hmm. Then he came back, and then yeah, then Holyfield he fought Holyfield twice, and second time he bit his ear off. Yeah. Not off, but partially off. Partially off. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. One of the. He was he was losing when this happened. Yeah, yeah, and he accused Holyfield of headbutting him. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of hard to accuse somebody headbutt that you bite their ear. It's kind of like miss, yeah, you, that's why he did it. Yeah, I he guess. was getting frustrated, uh, saying okay. he was headbutting him, so he just lashed out in anger. Yeah, uh-huh. I just watched a documentary uh-huh. on Tyson. It's very very good, and they said he was the most recognizable person on the planet at his height. At his height, yeah, like oh. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> that stayed. That, yeah. Among 5'10 males. Yeah. The height of his career. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. And now he's got the, the tattoo all over his face. Mm-hmm. So it's hard for him to blend very, in. Very, very famous. Yeah. yeah. He's up there with the queen. Mm-hmm. And there's not many kind of villain. I mean, he went to jail for sexually assaulting a woman. Yeah. He uh, abused his wife. He bites a guy's ears off. And now he's still so beloved in this yeah. next chapter of his life. It's pretty crazy. It's you see, everybody like looks re- past a lot. Everybody looks past the yeah. yeah. He's almost like the reverse OJ. Well, if you yeah, maybe if you just don't murder someone, they people can deal with quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> There's a line. <laughs> And it gets drawn. Yeah. And it's uh, the death of another person. <laughs> Just don't, that's, don't brutally murder two that's people. All, that's all we're asking. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember when Monica Seles got stabbed? No. Who's that? Uh, tennis player. She was no. number one tennis player in the world, and she got stabbed on court. On TV. During a game? Yeah. During, During a, match. a match? Yeah. Yeah. There was a Seinfeld where yep. she comes back and Kramer's the ball boy. Yeah. <laughs> gets her hurt. Yeah. First match back. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, a fan of Steffi Graf ran out there and stabbed her in the back. Yeah. Why? Because she was the number one player and he was a fan of Steffi Graf. I mean, he's obviously crazy. Yeah. Yeah, he's not a they didn't, they didn't do an interview with him afterwards. Talk he goes, about well, uh, you know, I've been debating it for a while. How crazy is that? That happening? Can you imagine that happening? No. Can, can Seeing you imagine? that now, like just like the most famous tennis player. Yeah. Get stabbed and I mean the announcers of that wasn't it on TV or I, maybe it was I, I, don't, I just remember seeing the highlights I don't remember it if it was live or not it's the do, French they just, Open they right quickly do the highlights of it and uh, right here we had this match got called uh, Stephanie Graf uh, gets stabbed in the back right? I think I only Up remember next, uh, Vanessa Williams <laughs> she get, closes her match out and you're like what's that no go yeah, back go to back to the stabbing they go no she's on the uh, what is it? The I the DL. What is it? The <laughs> injured reserve. Injured reserve. She's yeah. on the IR. Uh, <laughs> got stabbed. Oh God! At her house? No, no, on the court. Oh yeah, we have footage during the match. Yeah. We have footage. We'll go to it later. Brian's <laughs> yeah. home just watching the highlights. Huh? I believe she's eating cereal. She got. Steph, what, what's going on in there? Stephanie Graf got stabbed. <laughs> yeah. No, they breezed over pretty quick. I guess it wasn't that big of a deal. <laughs> yeah. I, now that you make that point, I only remember seeing Monica Sellis, that shot of her on the ground with them treating Maybe they purposely didn't show the stabbing, or maybe as a kid, <laughs> I just didn't see it. That is crazy. That is crazy. crazy. I, 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 that, I missed that one. They haven't they haven't done a 30 for 30 about that one, I guess, no. yet. Because I haven't She I hadn't was heard so young. That. She was 16 when she won the French Open, I think. And yeah. And Did this just, end her career? No, she came back, yeah. but she was never the same. I mean, that's, yeah. I mean, that's she's still so younger crazy. than I am now. <laughs> yeah. She's 43, yeah. Yeah, so she got stabbed in 93, and then she came back and started playing professionally You're in 95. You're possibly, Bates, older, older than the knife that was used. <laughs> I'd say so, yeah. Yeah, there's a great chance <laughs> that is is Brian older than the knife. I was 22 years old when that happened, so probably so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Do you remember uh, Monica Lewinsky and all that? Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember all that happening. But I mean, like, this is, I'm in my 90s, I'm just. Living life, man. Well, I'm I'm yeah. I'm, I'm a teenager, yeah. basically. So yeah. you're you're paying attention to the news as much as a teenager is by not really at all. Mm-hmm. like you know by by it's happening. My parents are talking about it, right? But I'm not, especially something like that. They're not going to yeah. be no talking about that no. around the kids. I started at my t- TV station the day after the Oklahoma City bombing. Oh wow! So that's what got you into the news. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just remember being so nervous, and now I'm like, I got to learn everything about this bombing. So when I show up for work, yeah. you know, I'll be up to speed on it. Yeah. And did they ask you stuff? Well, no. They not if you did it. <laughs> yeah. Where were you yesterday? There you go. Yeah. That's the first. <laughs> it's pretty convenient. Wow. Perfectly times out that the drive from Oklahoma City is about. The start of your shift. We told you to be here at 8 a.m. and uh, doing the math. Well, I did have to be at work the day after the uh, Olympic bombings. Yeah. And I went to the Olympics. Yeah. In Atlanta in 96. And 
I was there for like two days, and then I drove home that night because I had to be at work the next morning. And when I woke up the next morning, it was on the news about the bombing that had happened yeah. later that night. Oh, wow. So on paper, it looked like you I, I could have been a suspect in that. Yeah. yeah. And then headed back to Nashville. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was almost the Richard Jewell of that yeah. Yeah. situation. <laughs> you just got away. <laughs> Man, that was tried in the to 90s too, right? Yeah. 96. God, there's been a lot going. Yeah. A lot happened. Yeah. A lot of stuff movies are made about. Yeah. The 70s and 80s stunk. They were 90s is where it's at. 90s is That's where, where it's stuff at. started yeah. to happen. Yeah. Look, I threw out some pretty morbid stuff in the 70s. He got shot down. But now that we remember it, it's all fun and games. Yeah, that's right. I mean, <laughs> now you get it. Princess Die Die. <laughs> there we go. Keep I it remember going. That. Yeah, we've talked about that a little bit. I was yeah. in Memphis to see the Tennessee Oilers. Yeah. And uh, you were, you're, you're scooting by with your bag like Newman and Seinfeld when he goes to the Super, Super Bowl, Bowl and he goes, Excuse me. <laughs> He's good. What does he have? You have all your you have all your stuff, your mug and your just bag and giant popcorn. Yeah. Spent $120 in the gift shop. <laughs> yeah. Um some so we'll talk about I mean Columbine also happened. That's pretty bad. Oh, John yeah. Benet Ramsey. <laughs> Whisper that in there, man. John Benet Ramsey. Um John Benet Ramsey. I, I remember that. Like that, but that didn't that when was that early nineties? I thought that was like the forties. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. Uh, that was ninety six. Did, didn't a kid a famous kid go missing in like the forties? Uh, yeah, they're talking about that. The Lindbergh baby. Yeah, the yeah, Lindbergh. Okay. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. Probably the same thing. Uh so the World Wide Web uh first went online in nineteen ninety three. Mm. Because I said World Wide Web. <laughs> Just funny the way you said it. Yeah, yeah. The internets started. And- Do you think that they, when they started the World Wide Web, they thought, they go, I bet people say World Wide Web. And they don't think WWW. I remember yeah. people calling it a lot the information superhighway. Yeah. <laughs> people call that unironically? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Back in my day. <laughs> 93, it goes on. Whew. In 96, Hotmail launched, first web-based email service. Wow. They were the first. Mm-hmm. That's surprising. I have a Hotmail still. You use it for professional? For No. Okay. It's just. What is it? Still out uh, there. I don't even. Yeah. It's. Uh, I, I need one for when everyone emails about asking you stuff. I can just yeah. give them that account. You can yeah, give yeah, them your yeah. Hotmail. <laughs> They're, uh, yeah, it's now it's just like an email that's like so old. There's nothing, no one would ever send me anything. Now it's like just used for, if it's like, do you require an email yeah. on something? You can just like, I just put that one in. Mm, you don't good. have a Hotmail? I did. I don't yeah. still have one, but that was my first email. Yeah, but that that's, it is a good way to do You just create some email that's like, you know, maybe I'll go back and use it. Maybe yeah. I'll clean it up and <laughs> yeah, uh, sort through sort through it and get it going again. <laughs> Uh, before the Google, there was Ask Jeeves. Oh, yeah. You guys heard of this? Oh, yeah. This is, uh, I remember oh, you know Ask this? Jeeves, yeah, for Jeeves? sure. Yeah. Okay. It's now just, I think it's still around. It's called Ask.com, but it, they had the whole thing where it was supposed to be ask, asking a butler mm-hmm. questions. Right. I remember the guy. Oh, okay. I thought it was before your time. I don't know. Alta Vista, man. That was the search in the 90s. In 93, CDs finally passed cassettes. It's more sold as far as music. Didn't you say cassettes are making a comeback? Kind of. I, I was at a, a sub pop store at the at the airport in Seattle, and all the new indie bands they had cassettes there for sale. Did you I ever have that? Was interesting. Did you ever have a pager or your yeah, friends? I did. Yep, I remember getting a pager, uh, and you could, and like you would text. You know, one four three was I love you. <laughs> did you know that? Uh-uh. Uh uh. You were too old for. You were too old for a pager this like for this kind of one four nine one four three. Yeah, I. Do you know why? Can you guess why? What's one f- four three. First three letters of I. Is it I L Y? No. No. I, I don't know why. I is one. Love is four. You is three. Oh. That's how you wrote out everything. Yeah, we did on one. Yeah, no, you would write it like if you had a girlfriend at oh, the I didn't, time. I didn't know. You text it. That's all how beepers work. Something. That's how you set messages. Well, you would talk in numbers, so you would have to like talk in numbers. You know, nine one one would be like you need to call now. Uh, one four three, maybe one. Uh, I don't remember. What, what was look up beeper? Yeah, what does it say? Uh, why does look? Why does one four three? There you go. Yeah. There you go. 
Uh, I love you. There you go. Based on the number of letters in each word. Mm. So I'm going to do Mr. Rogers, too. Uh, Mr. Rogers used to say that number a bunch. I guess. Hmm. Interesting. I, we, we had a buddy who wore a pager, and he's like, most people, he, there's no reason he needed to have it. He just thought it looked cool. Yeah. So we would, me and my roommate would go, like, we'd take turns. He'd be over visiting. He'd be have his pager on. We'd go in a back room, just one of us. We call from a phone his pager and just put in some fake number, and it wouldn't be instantaneous like a cell phone is now. It'd take a minute yeah. for it to go through. So by the time he gets it, we're already both back out sitting in the living room, and he get this page and he like, ah, who is that? And we just watch him call some number <laughs> <Yeah>. of somebody, <laughs> and he's like, dude, I've got the number right here. You just you just texted me, and he would get furious. <laughs> And then he started catching on, like, I don't know what this is. So then we had to start putting in Lebanon prefixes because yeah. he was from Lebanon. So he's like, four, 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 all that. Oh, God, I recognize that number. I just can't think of what it is. And it would just be some made up. Yeah. We did that for, for months. Yeah. And I think he finally gave up his pager because he was like, this thing, I'm just getting crank calls all the time. It was just us. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he finally hears now. Yeah. Big fan. I could never do. Crank phone calls. I couldn't either. Someone I, just asked me about doing one, and I was like, I'm not, I'm not the, I don't like them. I, I'm uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. I'm super uncomfortable, dude. Yeah. I've talked about playing pranks a lot, but I, this, like, I'm good with pranks, like, the way I do, I like kind of just make, I, I gotta make it feel like, I don't, like, when I do all the pranks with Nick about the Nancy Kerrigan, it's like I can get caught up if I can make it where I can be laughing. Yeah. And I and made that one where I'm start laughing because I'm like, I'm like, I can't believe yeah. you even know. No one knows. Like, how do you think people know this? And like, so the, if it's that kind of way, I can do it. Yeah. But then I got to stop it and then mm-hmm. I got to move on yeah. and then let it sit. So I like pranks, but I like those. I'm not a good on the phone. Yeah. Bothering a stranger. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, yeah. Well, this is one where we didn't have to do anything except just dial a number and right. let him do the rest. Right. And you get well, the- yeah. Yeah. Like, I could do that. Yeah. I could do that one all day. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Bezos founded Amazon in his garage in 1994. Yeah, I was under a box. And he first <laughs> found it, he was just moving stuff out of his garage. <laughs> Honey, what's this? It says Amazon on it. He goes, Oh, no, <laughs> it started off just an mar- online marketplace for books, yeah, and then eventually music and videos, and now it rules the world. Minimum wage in the 1990s, do you know? 325. 425. 425. Oh, yeah. that's right. That's what I was paying. Yeah. Opry Land closed 1997. Yeah. yeah. Still biggest mistake, Nashville. Why'd they close that? Such a good theme park. Well, Opry Mills is doing well, right? No. Not <laughs> anymore. <laughs> After the it pandemic? Was, I don't think so. I mean, I think people still go out there, but I, I don't think it's as good as it, as, as it was when it first started. I mean, the theme park was so great. Mm-hmm. It just it was his own little theme park, our own theme park. Yeah. Well, speaking of Amazon, did you know I was at the mall in Albany, New York this weekend? They had an Amazon Prime store in the mall. Have you seen those places? Uh, it's like you get in and you show that you're an Amazon Prime member and everything's cheap. Oh yeah. So it's, it's oh, great. Wow. I had never seen those places yeah. before. I like that because you can actually go see the stuff you're right. Buying. Pick it up and hold it, and I'm yeah. Like, yeah. What is this stuff? Just like nonsense. It's just like a mixture of every kind of thing. Yeah, a lot like, of Amazon that? devices, like and stuff, Stone. But Yeah, like yeah. one of those kind of yeah. stores. Yeah, but it's all right there, and it's all cheap if you just show them that you're a member. Yeah, I was like, you're gonna take over the physical mall too. Yeah, I hope that malls don't ever go. Like I, 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 you still like shopping. Like I mean, maybe people just eventually will be like, "Oh, I don't care." Like they won't even know. It's like, yeah, you try it when they, when they, when you get it, mm-hmm. and then you send it back. Like returns will just become everything. Yeah, you know. Um, you do you want to get? You probably know because I sent you my notes ahead of time. The number, the top movie of the nineteen nineties. You saw that, right? Mm-hmm. Of the whole 90s. Yeah. Uh, Home Alone. It's a good guess. It's the bi- this movie is the biggest grocer of all time until 2010. Titanic. Yeah. Yeah. It's twice Pretty as much big. as the second one. And it was another James Cameron movie that yeah. topped it, right? Avatar. Wow. Oh, yeah. Aren't they doing another Avatar? I think so. 
It's crazy to me that Avatar did so good. The least talked about movie. Do people talk about it? Not the way you would think for the most... Like Titanic is still on all the time. Avatar, you're like, I don't... I watched it once because it was like you had to go watch it and I've never watched it again. Did you see it in 3D? Uh, I don't remember. I feel like that was one where you're supposed to see it in 3D, so maybe that's why they don't show it as much on TV. But I mean, it just doesn't feel like it gets for being... It's the most... I agree. It's the most... It's the yeah number one of all time. Yeah, I've never seen it. It's the blue one. They're yeah, all blue. They're all blue. Is it good? I mean, it must be. It can't be terrible. I mean, I I enjoyed it. I thought it was good, but I agree Better with you totally. Titanic. I saw it in 3D. I think it was because you were going to see it in 3D. Maybe I did see it in 3D, but it was like the idea of it was like it was such a you were going to go. It wasn't even about the movie as much as it was about just seeing the experience, yeah, the, the experience. experience of it. Yeah, but like not better than the Titanic. I, no. Titanic's like it was great. Yeah. And then Titanic had the big soundtrack. Yeah. yeah. There's just so Lean much more. With it. Yeah. 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 The nineties, I looked at all the the top I mean, the nineties was to me the best decade ever for movies. There's so many good ones. Scream. Yeah. Ooh. Um it did good. Jurassic Park, Independence great. Day. <laughs> Independence Day. The Lion King. Great. great. Jurassic Park's great. Dress oh, Park's also one of the big movies. blockbusters, man. Yeah. Uh, the Blair Witch Project. All being remade right now. Yeah. Think Just, about that. Like, that's the, that's the mean, like, 90s were like, Jurassic Park was a whole new thing. Mm. No one's ever knew that. Mm. Scream. Whole completely different kind of thing. They they and, you know then they just started almost like scream like they almost started that scream scream two scream like it kind of started that world of just like oh y'all like this thing we're just keep doing it. Yeah, and wasn't Blair Witch Project kind of the first to do the shaky cam low budget? Scary Everybody movie? thought it was real. Yeah, we all thought. I remember. I remember Blair Witch very much. I remember yeah, thinking I remember it was it real. Too. Yeah, yeah. Um, Look at this run that Tom Hanks went on. In the 90s, okay, from 92 to 99. These, these, these are in order A League of Their Own, Sleepless in Seattle, Philadelphia, Forrest Gump, Apollo 13, Toy Story, That Thing You Do, Saving Private Ryan, You've Got Mail, Toy Story 2, The Green Mile, and Castaway. And Castaway is in 2000. Yeah. Well, I mean, what an yeah. un- I don't know if yeah. anybody's had a run better than that. No. no, those are all go up a little bit more. Classic. What else is it? And, then, and in the two thousands, you got Band of Brothers, Road to Perdition, Catch Me If You Can. Then he does the Terminal. Then he starts in Polar Express. And but that nineties run was well, I mean, insane. The, the Da Vinci Code. Yeah, he's still look. He's still making money yeah. in the two thousands. But he does Toy Story three and four and yeah. Saving Mr. Banks. He's always but, there. Yeah, pretty wild. Rudy came out. In the Rudy, movies. best sports movie ever made, man. Yeah, it's came out great. in ninety two, ninety three. I think. 93. I mean, it was Joe 92. versus the volcano in ninety. Isn't that wasn't that a big movie? I remember it. Never heard. Of I it. remember it. I like uh, the Burbs. I remember. Yeah. Big. I, I remember in eighty eight. I mean, he too. just took off and was just like. Do you ever see that punchline movie? Yeah. The movie with him didn't stand up. So I talked to him about it. Oh really? Yeah. What? I talked to him about. Uh, uh, when he, uh, I because I was like, I just asked about doing stand because I thought he did stand up, and I was like, Did you do stand up? I've always heard you did, and he said, No, yeah, Michael Keaton was a stand up, right? Mm-hmm. Right, but uh, Tom Hanks said he never did it, and I would say we'd always joke about there being lockers. Oh, that's what I was gonna ask you yeah. about. Yeah, they show up like, yeah, and he in was a like, locker yeah, room. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen it. Oh, they're like stand ups yeah. at a club, they show up they and they get locker? dressed in a locker room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so then it's funny. like they head out it's so and funny go do their show. About. That's yeah. funny. Uh Pulp Fiction, Shawshank Redemption. Mm. Yeah. The Matrix. Still never seen Shawshank Redemption, people. You haven't? No. That's what I just Did talked we talk about. about that? No, I talked about it on the podcast, yeah, because people get uh, mad. Yeah, yeah, that's probably my favorite movie. Yeah. No, and no. It's my f- I think it's the best movie ever made. Just when you get some time, watch it. You'll enjoy it. Yeah. You'll love it. Yeah. It's so good, man. It's kind of a thriller. Have you ever seen Whiplash? No, no. <laughs> no. I think you like Whiplash. Yeah, someone's, yeah, you, you said that. You would love Whiplash, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. It's like not a car wreck, though, right? There is a car wreck. Oh, it. there is. Okay. And Whiplash? Yeah. Oh. Is, is there? 
Yeah, have you seen Whiplash? Yeah, but I don't even remember. There's, about- a, there's a car accident scene in it. Okay, I don't even remember that. I've only seen it once, so I just remember how good it was. Oh. Maybe it's not. <laughs> it was. It's an unbelievable movie, yeah. but there's a car accident in it. Uh, books, John Grisham was the best-selling author of the 90s. Read all of them. Pelican Brief, The Client, The Firm. Did you? Yeah. Did no, you read- I know. I've read uh, some. I've read Patterson. Yeah. Some Patterson books. Oh, yeah. But the... Uh, but J.K. Rowling debuted Harry Potter in 1997. Mm. You have read those, right? Uh, no. I read uh, oh. The Hunger Games. Oh, okay, that's right. Same thing. Like a teenage flying through the <laughs> clouds, you know, whatever. Whatever nonsense. I, yeah, I was never... Harry Potter, I don't think I've ever even watched. I'll watch them if, like, Harper wants to, like... When she, I'll go through all that stuff. All the stuff. I just don't care. Like, yeah. Uh, so I was never just I was just never into it. They're remaking it as an HBO either. HBO series. Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I'll care. Oh, it'll be awesome, man. But you loved it. No, oh, yeah. So yeah, yeah. But I, I didn't like the movies at all. So if they remake it, well. Oh, you did I'd not like the movies. No. Because you like the book so much. Yeah. Well, the, the the movies were not very good. I mean, they're objectively not very good. So hmm. I think. But I thought people. So maybe not objectively. I guess people. Yeah, I guess subjectively, not very good. (laughs) It is pretty good, but (laughs) yeah, they made a ton of money. Everyone loved us up, Aaron. Uh, Let me back up about a minute and restate. (laughs) I personally didn't like them, but I know a lot of people did, and I respect their opinion. Yeah, the most watched TV episode of the nineties was the Cheers finale in nineteen ninety three. Nineteen ninety three million people watched it. It was on for eleven years. Yeah. Mm. But TV, like number one shows wise, the last five years of the 90s, it was back and forth between Seinfeld and ER. Yeah. It would be one, two every year, back and forth for the last five years. And they both, NBC, I think they both came on Thursday nights. Mm -hmm. Maybe back to back. I can't remember. I remember my mom watching ER. Like, was, I loved it. Yeah. That was back too when you had to go. Like, it was like, my show's on, get out of the room, yeah. mm. don't mess with anything. Yeah. Kind of fun. You <laughs> yeah. know, like it's like the it's on. Yeah. Quiet. Watch my like, stories. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I feel like maybe it's just a function of who I hang out with, but does anybody talk about ER still or care about it in the way that they uh, do Seinfeld? Uh well, I would it's not really not good. in my world. Not obviously. in your world. It's just not fair to be because yeah. your world is not I, I, there's not anybody doing this many Seinfeld references on any podcast on earth. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, <probably> true. <laughs> you're just around people that obsessed over Seinfeld. Yeah. Uh so and I, so I bet they're not talking about either one. Seinfeld's mm-hmm. still on, but ER is still huge. But Grey's Anatomy came along and I think isn't it the same show? Like it's been a lot hospitals. of hospital yeah. show. I'm gonna start dropping some ER references in this podcast. Did you, know? you watch ER? No, but I'll okay. go and watch it. You will just as while you drive home. You got a long drive ahead of you. <laughs> 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 I remember uh, Friends was so big too. I never watched ER. I did watch Friends, and George Clooney and Noah Wiley made an appearance on yeah. Friends, kind of like a crossover thing. I remember that was a big deal. Oh yeah. First Prince of Bel Air. I mm. watched that. I remember watching that last episode and I cried when that ended. Really? Yeah. It was great. Then there's a couple scenes of that one that's like, a couple scenes of that show that will make yeah. you cry. Yeah. yeah. How come you don't want me? Yeah. 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 Home Improvement. Yeah. Full House. Baywatch. Beverly Hills 90210. Man. Yeah. Melbourne's 90s Place. was great. What a great decade. Yeah. All around. Got some great true crime. Originality. Right. X X Files. It's before it's time. Yeah. That's is what it, they're doing now. Yeah. Is it not, unless I'm wrong, but is all this original? Like, isn't it all original stuff? 90s. Uh, it's, it's, I like to take ownership of weird that they, it was. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. Wall and Order started in the 90s. It's still on. They were oh, yeah. still, they're making stuff for, they were making stuff for me. And so when they started making TV for your generation, it all went bad. You talk, I'm watching all the same stuff you're, you're talking about. No, you hate all this. <laughs> what are you talking You've never even heard of ER. <laughs> Did you watch Barney? You're asking people still talk about the a, a, a 90s hospital drama. Still like, <laughs> is that a little water cooler talk? 
still going on? Yeah. No, I didn't. I didn't. I know it's not in the zeitgeist. I'm just saying, is it? It's not talked about. It's not referenced. <laughs> Stat. Yeah. I need a. <laughs> well, I don't even know it. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's not referenced. Like Seinfeld. One four three. One four three. Uh, you asked if I watched Barney. Yeah. Maybe when I was super super young, and then it became a joke to watch <laughs> it. You, were four? You, would, you would get made fun of for watching it. So everybody would be like, "No, I don't watch Barney." <laughs> Back when yeah. I'm still wearing a new kid's shirt, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you're ridiculing kids for watching Barney. Yeah. It was the number one show on television from 92, 93 season. Oh, weird. On PBS. Weird. That's crazy. But I feel like that's a, it's a kid thing. So it's like, that's, you know, people start putting kids in front of the TV. And so you would have, I mean, there's stuff on, I mean, that's like now if you could go see YouTube videos of these YouTube stars. That are like it's got a billion views, and you're like, I don't even. What is that? That's hmm. insane. We've talked about this before, but like, what did I think Barney was watching that show? I think a dinosaur. I you I thought it was a real, a real dinosaur singing to me. Oh, when as a kid, yeah. I don't think you think it through that much. It's just it's. But it's like, funny. what do you think it is? You don't. You just don't. I don't think any kid is breaking it down like that. I mean, you might but be. That's, your family might be. This makes sense. Not. Y'all probably talked deep about it, but I think most of us would just get thrown in front of a TV. Our face hits the screen, and then we're just like, and it's just Barney, yeah. like, and you're. You're like, not thinking about whether it's a mascot or if it's a real thing. Or, no, no. For the me, second that you start thinking about that, it's over. That's what I mean. But I, I, I see kids see mascots, and I just don't. I don't know what they think they're looking at. Uh, they, they're just like, it's that they're, they're obviously not aware that it's, you know, guy in a mascot costume. Yeah. It's a big scary. Yeah. But I don't, but they're not, I don't think they're, but they're not freaking it. out. They don't think it's a real dinosaur. What's the same with they, Sesame some Street? Of them do. What's that? I mean, Sesame Street was my generation and yeah. I just don't think I even thought about Big Bird if he's what he really was. I just think he's a Big Bird. <laughs> yeah. You think, is this where Big Bird lives? So you just, yeah, you kind of think, well, Big Bird lives on this street. You think it's a real You think it's Big it. Bird. I don't remember thinking You just anything. think Big Bird lives there and that's it. You don't think that's crazy that there's a yellow bird living on the, you know, and we're all just fine with it. Like, you know, you don't think, it's not like you, hmm. someone's sitting there going, I mean, now I do. It's but, a little weird, right? Yeah. It's a little weird. I mean, I did the same thing. I wasn't sitting there thinking about Barney that much. But now I watch kids watch it. And I don't. I don't. I don't get it. Yeah, it's not for you now. <laughs> Thankfully. Yeah. I, think I mean, I'm still on. into it. I don't think I, you hurt their feelings if you're if they're going. To Aaron's like, I don't watch the show anymore. They go. Yeah, that, I'm glad to hear that. That's what they would say. That makes us feel. Then we're doing our job. If you're not into barney <laughs> I, got, I really outgrew you guys yeah, <laughs> yeah. we hope so we hope so <laughs> is barney still on i mean i think he's extinct like, yeah he i don't might know if he's still around well dinosaur joke <laughs> <laughs> music you think that's what they told him when they fired him <laughs> <laughs> they the, the actual guy <laughs> hey, hey uh jimmy can we talk to you in the office do you know what's going do you hear what animals going extinct and they're like he's like no you <laughs> pack your bags, get your get purple out butt out of here. Meteors coming, buddy. Meteors coming. <laughs> That's what they all. And he goes, what? Uh, uh, I just typed in Barney.com. I'm losing it, guys. That's all right. Mm. I'm losing it. Music of the 90s, grunge took off mm -hmm. in the 90s. Mm. Um, smells like Teen Spirit, Rolling Stone named it the top song of the 90s. Mm -hmm. It's a great song. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, were you into grunge? Uh, I don't know. No. That's probably a little before your time. Country yeah. music also became just huge early 90s. Nobody was bigger than Garth Brooks. Yeah, Billy, Ray, Billy Ray Cyrus had the number one album of any music genre in 1992. Is he only from... Uh, don't uh, Breaky Heart. Yeah. Break heart. Yeah. That's by far his biggest song. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Like, he's so famous. And then now the Lil Nas song that mm -hmm. he did. Mm -hmm. Basically, is it two songs? And this dude's like got a straight up, I mean, Garth Brooks type fame. I mean, his album was called Some Gave All, which was a song I remember. Yeah. But Achy Breaky Heart was by far his big song. He's not Garth Brooks level. I mean, he's definitely, he's and, transcended and, well, now his. Yes, and then you had now Miley Cyrus. He's transcended his own success yeah. for sure. 
Yeah, I only know that one song, "Ain't Break Your Heart," and then the little Nas X song, and then yeah, stuff with Hannah Montana. Yeah, from the movie. But in '92, he had the best-selling album of any music, so he was about as big as it was. And and Shania Twain in the late '90s was about yeah. as big as it was. I remember her being huge. Yeah, she. Yeah. Do you remember the Macarena? Yep. Was that '95? Uh, '96. Yep. Part of '97. Oh, never mind. I don't remember. <laughs> was that the biggest song of the all the 90s? I don't know if it's the biggest yeah. song. It was the greatest one-hit wonder of all time, according to VH1. Who was it by? Was it uh, the... Los the, Del Rio? Yeah. That sounds right. Oh, they're my favorite. One of my favorites. What's the dog song? Oh, Who Let the Dogs Out? Yeah. Who Let the Dogs Out? That was, was the Baja Boys, right? They, yeah. Baja, Baja Men. Baja Men, excuse yeah. me. The Baja Men started in the 70s, dude. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah. I think I, you may have told me that. It yeah. took that long to get a song. Yeah, I tried to digital about that once. I couldn't believe that. They started in like 76. Yeah. Billboard named Mariah Carey as the artist of the decade in the U.S. Okay. That's fair. Top selling, Chris, top selling Christmas toys, 1990, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Big. This was all we were, I was into. That's right, G.I. Joe's, too. Okay. They're just like action Ninja figures. Turtles. Yeah. Did you have toys? <laughs> spatula. Yeah, do? Spatula was I the number spatula one. spatula for a while, yeah. and then I, Hot Wheels and stuff. Yeah. I, yeah. I had toys, dude. Yeah. <laughs> lab experiments? Just books. Just, <laughs> just yeah. books, lab equipment. <laughs> yeah, like you beakers. Just, and... There's a pen in your mouth. <laughs> and you go, well, where, so where is Sesame Street, though? What state is it in? And your dad's like, <sighs> <sighs> just, I mean, your dad just trying to go to bed. He's like, Baltimore. And you go, okay. Okay. And there's a yellow bird running around these, this street. <laughs> on the and, wire. And nobody's calling the cops. I, we're not seeing it on the news. OJ, we're watching that. No one's watching. It's a four-year-old. I'm watching the OJ trial. Yeah. We sit there and watch the OJ trial. Still don't think you did it. And then you're telling me no one's getting this yellow bird. No one's trying. That's what you're trying. That's what you're trying to tell me, Dad. Right. <laughs> you very calm. <laughs> yeah. Father. 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 Dad. Yeah. Man that owns this home. <laughs> very disrespectful. I want to know how many of these you had, Nate. Super Nintendo. Yep. Talk Boy. Mm, F, what was that? That was from Home Alone 2, the little thing. You, yeah. you talk into it immediately, play back what you just said. I probably never had any of the real. I had always the off-brand <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Talk, I talk Girl. I, well, I had. I remember I bought, my pair of Jordans <laughs> I bought. I got I got them at the uh, Dollar General store, and they just don't have the logo on it, but they made oh, them look just yeah. like Jordans. Yeah. And so my, my parents would only give me those. You can never afford these shoes. I mean, these shoes were- They were ridiculous. They were ridiculous. They were in your- So he's like, you never would get them. I remember this kid. This poor kid showed up to PE one day with Jordans, but they were fake Jordans. And- <laughs> The, the 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 silhouette of Jordan had you could see laces on the shoes. <laughs> this kid got trashed so bad for wearing fake Jordans, Aww. man. I don't think he ever wore them again. But he tried to sneak them by. I can identify with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Having some flashbacks. Oh, I'm sorry. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think. My brother, I think, was more into Power Rangers than I was. I think I was about out of toys. I was. I was G.I. Joe, Ninja Turtles, you know, would have been that early 90s, late 80s would have been more of my toy thing. Pokemon? No, I was gone by then. All right. Gone. On the road. You might have been in I was Pokemon. Never. It was never Pokemon. Was jumping trains. Never any anime, anything like that. All right. I'll finish up some sports. Athlete of the decade. You can probably guess. Tiger. No, nah, he's a little Jordan. bit later in the Oh, Jordan. Jordan, yeah. yeah. Jordan. Bulls won six NBA championships. Cowboys won three Super Bowls. Yeah. Yankees won three World Series. Wow. Boxing had some crazy stuff happen. Besides what we already talked about, um, there was the guy who landed, parachuted into the fight. Do you, do you know this? No. In Vegas? Yeah. Like a melee breaks out because a guy parachutes in um, during the Holyfield Riddick Bow fight. They called him Fan Man. And uh, isn't that the, the announcer? He's like, this is not. There's a famous announcing. Is it Marv Albert? 
Uh, I don't know, but there's a famous. He goes, "This is not what we've wanted to." There's oh, a scar I, on this. Yeah, I think like it's that. crazy. I mean, the fighting gets the melee is really bad. Yeah, really, really bad. Oh, this is hilarious. He and just lands. He lands. <laughs> he mistimed his land a little bit. Yeah, and are they just they, beating him up in the stands? Yeah, yeah, and then they just destroy him. Good. Well, it's like arrest him, but like you, you can't kill the guy. Uh, and then why does it? And then doesn't it become even more of a fight? I don't know. It's a long video. I think they just reshow it. The parachute's trapped. Oh, I thought there was there was another big melee in a weird another boxing match. There was another big fight, and that's the one where the guy like it's the between the two fighters and their teams, yeah. and it just gets <laughs> crazy. Tupac was killed yep. leaving a Mike. Well, not leaving Mike Tyson fight, but he had been in the fight earlier that night. I remember that. Remember that? Do you remember that happening at all? No, I mean I know about it, but I don't remember it happening at the time. I don't think I knew who Tupac was till way later. Yeah, and Biggie. Yeah, all those guys. Yeah, I remember watching, uh, seeing Biggie's funeral. I think on TV. Yeah, when did he die? Ninety seven, maybe. 90. Maybe like Tupac, I remember it, but I wouldn't have known to like go like try to probably look for his funeral. And yeah. Biggie, yeah. I might have been. Is it bigger than Prince's dies? You think? No. Uh, it's bigger than MASH. Yeah. It was, uh, well, Biggie was, it was a big. It was big, but. Yeah. It was Biggie. It was as big as. <laughs> yeah. Prince's as die. Prince's die. Uh, <laughs> Magic Johnson, I remember when he announced he had HIV, HIV and yeah. re- immediately retired. Yeah. Yeah. And then he returned, 92 All-Star game, got MVP. And then people protested, and he retired again for four years, but then returned in 96 and played. I just remember he kept retiring. Yeah. He's coming back. Coming back. Chris Rock, I think, had a joke about apparently HIV makes you very undecisive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he played for the 92, the dream team. Yeah. Greatest yeah. team ever assembled. We didn't even talk about that yet. The yeah. U.S. won by average of 44 points. Players on the other team got their picture made and autograph, which uh, I yeah. fully support. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, Carlos Gross could have been on some of these other teams. Would you have went over there before the game started or after? <laughs> I would do it during. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> They'd be shooting a free throw, and I'd be right next to Jordan. I'm like, hey, you're yeah. trying to sign Sounds, in this real fast? Yeah. Do a selfie? All right. Tiger came on in 97. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He went professional in 96, age of 20. In April of 97, he won this first Masters by 12 strokes. He was the number one player in the world by June of 97. Stayed um, there for, like, the amount of weeks. Was nuts. Yeah. The amount of weeks he stayed number, number one. one. I mean, it just. Is it longer than anybody? It's not even close. Yeah. Look at the streaks, the longest number one. Like, it's it's not even remotely close. Uh, yeah, 281 81. weeks. And then his second place then the, is him is 264. Wow. Yeah. And then. So he basically <laughs> lost it. And then he did it again for the same amount of time. Yeah, and for context, the 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 next person is ninety six, Greg Norman, yeah. in ninety seven. Yeah, so it goes from two hundred and sixty six more rows. Did it say uh, is Jack Nicholas on there? Yeah, Nick all? Faldo. Kick. Yeah, uh, click that. I don't know if they even ranked it. Oh boy. Oh, it made you go to. Oh thing. boy. Yeah, Dustin Johnson, Tiger Woods again on there at sixty, and then Greg Norman again. Oh. Rory McIlroy. So it's funny. Maybe they didn't really do it when uh, Jack Nicholas was. Uh, so it's pretty funny. Like, so his sixty is basically like he was like two eighty one. Now he started in ninety nine, and then what's his sixties? Two thousand thirteen. Oh, so he got back up. Oh wow. So then he oh ends in 04, and then basically gets it back by June, <laughs> and then runs it for another five years. Nine months later, he gets it back, and then and then it. loses it again. Then gets it for. You know, another year and a half. Yeah. In 2013. Mm. Yeah, pretty wild. Uh, a couple of baseball things. Cal Ripken broke the consecutive games. I remember watching that game. Something they thought would never happen. Mm-hmm. And the home run race, which you already mentioned, yeah. McGuire and Sosa. I remember that very much. That the strike cool. happened in 94. Yeah. People were down on baseball. Right. And that was like a perfect 
It was it was the best. Was perfect rebound. It, it was the best. Uh-huh. It was nothing was funner. But they were breaking in on every channel, and just being like, "Here, Sammy Sosa up to bat." It was just you need something like that. That's that's what I think is almost what's bad with uh, TV now is that kind of stuff is not around as much as it was. I mean, everybody was watching that. They yeah. were they were breaking in every channel everywhere. Was like just like here we're going to show Sammy Sosa button. Here's my marble guard button. Uh-huh. And then they would hit a home run. It like, <laughs> yeah, like, every it's time. like softball. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's sure. funny to think about that we never crossed our mind. Like McGuire hit 245 home runs in four years. <laughs> the year after he hit 70, he hit 65. Right. Yeah. People forget about that. He broke the record again the next yeah. year. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, that's wild. All right. And the last thing I went on, the last thing of the 90s, Y2K. Do you remember that? Yeah. So you were you in college? Uh, I was already probably out. I was already done with college. I forget. Uh, I forget where I was. I was just wonder if Y two K affected you your work in any way. Uh, no, I don't think I had a <laughs> real job or <laughs> a mover. Or... Yeah, like I don't think I had a job. B- bouncing, I been doing bouncing my... tires. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing the drunk driving simulator. Did I tell you that job? No, no. no. Yeah, that's for another time. Okay. Uh, no, I don't. There, uh, Sorry. that was we drove. Uh, I did this drunk driving simulator where you would take a neon car, type in drunk driving. Maybe simulator. you told us during the odd jobs yeah. episode, yeah. And you would, and you would, it would drive slow. And I believe I was doing that during this time in uh, neon, yeah. And you would, uh, I mean, maybe it's different now. It was a, hmm. And you would you would take it and uh is that right there? That under the white car. Right here? Yep. And so we would go, uh, that's actually That's you in the car. <laughs> that might be me in the car. There's somebody in the back seat. Yeah. Uh see what, yeah, I mean, and so you would you would take that to school. You took that to school? Yep. With uh this other couple. And you would pretend to drive and I was it drunk? One of, no, you would be in the passenger seat. So I'm I mean, I'm and uh I would there was a break over there for me because they would drive through and it would like be delayed turn like you would try oh. to turn and then it would turn oh, late. Yeah, yeah. If they pressed the brake, it wouldn't stop. It'd be a delayed stop. You wouldn't. And there'd be like, all right, stop and don't hit this kid sign. I mean, I was nineteen, yeah, or twenty, and I'm like with all these like high school kids. <laughs> you wouldn't get the kids drunk. They... It was like going on the road for the first time. I like had money when I came back because like, yeah. you got paid and I, you would get paid to be traveling on the road. And so I would never spend any money on the road. Yeah. So I was 20. Is that when Y2K was? Uh, I was born in 79. Yeah. yeah. About, yeah. About. So like I was, yeah, I think I was 20. So I was, I might've been somewhere like during that, during Y2K. I and, was, and then someone stole the car. Really? <laughs> While you, know, you were out on the road? Yeah. We 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 parked at this hotel and we walk out the next day and the cars someone <laughs> broke open the thing, got in, sold the car completely. When they wreck it? Uh yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I can't remember. I feel like you could drive it, it would drive normal. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh because you had a computer and you would like type in like so someone get in the car and you go like, how old well, are you? There you go. Y2K probably happened. Yeah, how much do you weigh? Yeah. I think you ask them how much they weigh. And then uh, you put like how many drinks they had or like their alcohol level. Like, so depending on what the level was, was how hard the thing would turn. Mm. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's so crazy. Still yeah. in that car and then you have to enter your weight and yeah. all the stuff just to leave. Yeah. That's <laughs> funny. I haven't looked at that car in a long time. Well, I was working at the TV station in 99. So we were all hands on deck for Y2K. I mean, people thought the world might end. Yeah. Yeah. There was like, People were stocking food and. Were you doing all that? Were you prepping? <laughs> no, I wasn't prepping, but. Uh... You got a gun. <laughs> no, you had I a plan. <laughs> and you grabbed all your memorabilia <laughs> and. My Carlos Groves yeah. autographed <laughs> magazine and my New Kids on yeah. the Block shirt. And <laughs> 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 became my bunker, yeah. me, <laughs> me and Carlos. <laughs> but obviously, nothing much happened. Yeah. Yeah. Because we prepared, right? We prepared. That's you're the ready, whole argument. People say it. they overreact, and the other half says, "What's well, because no, it's because we took it serious and prepared." Right? Yeah. So, yeah, we did it. All we right. did it. Like we did this podcast, nineties. Yeah. That's it, right? That's it. That's it. We did it. We'll see you next time. <laughs>